Yorkshire's more spent. Follow official at CSA WC Leaks on social media for more information. <laughs> When you hear all the things you say, will you remember all the danger we came from? But all I can be strong and tender long before the taste of no surrender is grown. And well, you know, it's a smoke if you got it, cause it's going down. All I ever wanted was you.
contact with uh, in the missile language, to issues otherwise, which is likely to be insult, humiliate, intimidate, threaten, disparage, or vilify any other person, including players, match officials, or spectators, members of their race, religion, culture, color, descent, national, or ethnic origin. Such action will not be tolerated and is likely to result in ejection from the venue, the imposition of other sanctions, such as being banned from the venue in the future, and possible further action, including criminal prosecution. Main job, just send everywhere the ball goes. Ne? Follow the ball. Follow the ball.
Good evening, welcome to Daffa Bet St. George's Park, where the home side, the Warriors, unbeaten top of the table, taking on a struggling Titan side. And uh, this is the stronghold of the Warriors side. And with a game in hand, they are 10 points clear at the top of the log. The two umpires coming out are umpires Uguma and Gampu. The third umpire is Suduma and the match referee, Mr. Isaacs. The two opening batsmen for the Titans are Warriors and Stolz. And Stolz just playing in his second game for the Titans under lights this season. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see with the overcast conditions. It's been rather overcast all day today. Originally there was the south easterly wind blowing but that pitch from yesterday's 30 degree yeah, temperature I mean, here in Kabecha, that pitch looks rock hard. So there should be a bit of early movement for the medium paces, a little bit of swing, but once the ball softens up, it should be easier to bat on. The ball might, with a lot of that brown grass on the pitch, the ball might just stop, depending what length the bowler bowls to the batsman. And joining me in commentary tonight for this important clash is Anis Mohammed. And good evening, Anis. Good evening. It's going to be very interesting. The Titans hoping to get some revenge from uh, earlier this earlier this year. 
uh, this is the return fixture. The Warriors just managed to squeak through by two runs in the, uh, in the previous encounter. Opening the bowling is uh, the leading bowler for the leading wicket taker for uh, the Warriors. Uh, Interesting tactic that. You know, Robin Peterson, being the head coach of the Warriors, might have an influence in having looked at this pitch. He knows this pitch so well that he might think, well, let's negate the ball coming onto the bat and left arm spin in the first over. Yeah, and easily tucked away. More defensive field for the spinner. It's all going to be important. A line that he bowls on this specific pitch. They, with the field pack on the offside, uh, men out. Uh, just a change. Um, a man moving down to deep back to sorry deep mid wicket. The other man out is at long off a left hand right hand combination between uh, Pretorius and Stolp the right hand are now coming in uh, to face uh, the ball no, all too familiar a field setting for the left arm round the wicket and that's just helped along just the way from Stolp and the first boundary of the evening straying a tad too straight dropping it a bit short the ball just holding up in this wicket as we were talking about earlier and it was easily worked away by Stolp. Yeah, the, the, the length is going to be crucial the slower you bowl on this pitch because that was just slightly short and Stolp had all the time in the world to go down with a straightish delivery and get underneath it. And you've got two men on the leg side behind square and he just helped it over their heads for four. See what he does now. Down the wicket on the drive. Good fielding. This went a bit further towards the offside, bowling to his field very well. Uh, it will be interesting to see if uh, Sametu does what a lot of spinners have been doing recently, not trying to get the ball to turn, as he goes very straight this time in the block hole. Yeah, a lot more flight given to that yeah. delivery from Sametu. But, uh, you know, the fielding from the Warriors has been one of their strong points the whole season. And uh, backing up their bowlers, that's why they top of the log at the moment. Oh, that's fired in by Samir to tuck Stalk up. And all he can do is squeeze it out on the leg side. And there's uh, fielding for Kachila, easily he's avoiding got, a single. He's got to avoid going too straight with uh, both fine leg and third up in the circle. It depends on the pace of the pitch. There, it's fired in, and that's down the ground, mid on inside the circle. So there won't be a, ring, a run there. And a good starting over from Sumetu, just the five runs. We look at uh, the two batters' uh, records this season. Uh, we have got Pretorius. It'll be Swanapool from the park drive end. Oh, he's been a standout player for the Warriors recently. Certainly is. And it should be interesting to see the sort of field that is set for Swanapool. Keeping a slip in place. Deep back with square and a deep uh, and a back deep back with point. The two fielders are uh, out of the circle. Yeah, so you'd think he'd, he'd be looking to hit a hard length and hopefully get some movement, early movement, with this new white ball. Swanapool. Oh, very straight and midwicket immediately into action. Dot balls, so important early on. Create the pressure in that power play of the first six overs. Bear Swanapool has his radar on, finding the block hole early. We look at uh, Pretorius's record this year. He's had four games, uh, 69 runs, high score 37. Oh, full ball, looking for the Yorker, but a little bit too straight. 
good length. And Pretorius just squeezing it out on that leg side. That wideish man behind square will restrict it to just the single. Six without loss, Titans total. This sort of pitch, you wonder what sort of par the coaches will be looking at. Swanepoel deciding to come round the wicket now to the right-handed Stolk. Still keeping a slip in position. Fairly standard opening field setting with a, a deep backward point and a deep backward square leg. And Stolk just taking his time. Hasn't played too many games for the Warriors in this uh, Cricket South Africa T20 Challenge. Only second one. And scooped away over that short fine leg in the circle. And once again, not a very good line from Swanepoel and Stolk so far. Two boundaries to his name and uh, both have been almost freebies for him to... Uh, get some more confidence and with those two boundaries will do him a world of good. Um, I, think, I think that this pitch right now, this wicket, dropping it short is not the option right now. No, I agree with you. Ball just sitting up a tennis ball, it, tennis ball is bounce. Yeah, it's going to sit up and batsmen can pick their spot. Now that's been hoisted wide to that backward square leg and that's the first wicket for the Warriors. Swanepoel strikes and that's Stork that's got to make his way back to the pavilion. First wicket falling with 10 runs on the board and Stork gone for eight. That is, a, that is the exuberance of youth. Take it, chanting his arm, going for the long boundary. Uh, just managing to uh, mistime it and sky straight to the man uh, that was at the deep backward square. Now, that's the sort of delivery just back of a length that stood up. And he got underneath it and, and too far underneath it, so it didn't have any length to it. So that man, perfectly placed out in the outfield, had a comfortable catch coming towards him behind square. And uh, it just shows you the nature of the pitch. The batsmen are going to have to play themselves in here instead of playing those expansive shots, which they uh, expect coming from a Centurion Supersport Park type pitch. Which guy? Very different. Lot, yeah. Uh, also, an another feature that that we uh, that has been noticed in uh, especially T20 cricket is that batters no longer try to play that full shot down. They don't try to roll their wrist. They try to hit it up, get underneath the ball, and hit it up and help it uh, help it on its way. But this time, uh, attempting to do that to the very long boundary this uh, this time and just got caught. That deep, deep back with square leg makes you think, feel that the captain set that up on purpose. Swanepoel again, outside edge found. That man behind point will restrict it to a single. But a lot of the batsmen coming to St. George's Park will know that it is not a big playing surface. Correct. So if you can get underneath it and there is any form of wind blowing, it's likely going to carry for six. Unfortunately for Swanepoel, the pitch they've chosen to play on tonight, as you can see there, is one pitch away from the edge of the square. Another very good delivery to Pretorius. Swanepoel, with his tail up, controls that over. 11 for 1, the Titans. Stalk the man out. With it being the, 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 the second last pitch on the square, as, as we're saying, the boundary uh, on Stork would, would be the right hand is leg side is considerably larger than the one uh, that would be on his off side. Yep, if you're looking, if you're talking about uh, distances and niche, you're looking from Stork's off side, you, you're looking maybe 60 meters at most to his leg side, and this is was was his downfall, was that must be almost 80. Correct. A change of bowling for the Warriors, uh, Patrick Kruger coming in. He's also been a standout player, made a huge name for himself playing for the uh, Sunrisers Eastern Cape, but we, or, we Warriors fans already knew that he's been having a standout season, both uh, with both white ball and uh, red ball cricket. Kruger now down the leg side and that'll be the first extra given away 
commentator's curse. <laughs> Uh, the umpires are just very strict on anything leg sideish. And this Warriors side, 10 points ahead on the log at the moment. They're sitting on 35 points. Second are the Lions on 25, and they've got a game in hand on the Lions. Kruger again. That's a better line oh. wide and cut over. Breska at that short cover. Fingertips and away. away for four. Patrick Kruger uh, having a bit of a wayward start. However, he's got 10 wickets this, in the, uh, this season uh, currently at an average of 16.3, which is, <laughs> which is fantastic. Well, Moon Sammy, first boundary behind his name, helped by that... Uh, Widish delivery from Kruger, and there you could see the bounce on this pitch. It almost sat up and said, Hit me. Better line and well played by Moon Sam. He just angled the bat down into that vacant backward point area. Rotating the strike well. That's any coach's absolute dream. Get a boundary, look for a single the very next delivery. Especially when we've got a left hand, right hand combination. Very similar feel, deep backward square, and a, uh, a backward point on the boundary. You find in the first six overs with that traditional feel that has been set, that, well now it's interesting, it's being changed, that uh, widish backward point on the boundary has been brought into the circle. Dropping fine leg back. Oh. Is it another boy? This, this could be a delivery at the bowler's shoelaces. Kruger, in. Gives him length. Just work to the offside. And sneak through for the single. But in making those fielding changes, sometimes you telegraph to the batsman yeah. what sort of delivery you're looking to bowl. Sometimes it could be the bluff. But on this pitch, you change the length, there's a good chance it's going to sit up and ask to be hit. Crew again over the wicket now. Oh, cut away and that'll beat that man deep at third man and away for four. That was an exquisite shot second. from Munsami and his second boundary of the over. Ball again outside, off just sitting up. Munsami rocks onto his back foot and cuts it away beautifully. With this field, the fielders on the offside are very straight. So it's as if uh, Maddie Bredska, Bredska is asking the batters to play square of the wicket with cross batted shots. This one, an expansive drive. And that'll be another boundary. Just too much width being offered by Kruger. Munsami, he just waits for it. Because that ball sits there and he plays the most exquisite drive off the back foot behind square. That man at a, a wideish third man, even he can't get there. And Munsami's hitting to the long side of the boundary. And very quickly, the Titans with those flurry of boundaries have got to 26 for the loss of Stolk's wicket. Kruger again. Got to be straighter. And that's edged. Now, that poor man, <laughs> third man, he's had two sizzle passed to his right-hand side for boundaries. And that was way to his left. Ground to be made. He did well in restricting the single. And the over, the third over finishes with the Titans total on 27 for one. An expensive over that from Kruger, conceding 16 runs. Just trying to get there, just getting their lengths wrong, the Warriors. Captain Matthew Bertzka putting a lot of trust in his bowlers to bowl towards their field. Swanapool again, it will be to bowl his second over, conceding just the six runs in his first and the wicket of Stolk. Slip dispense with, and that's short down the leg side, and that's some wayward bowling from Swanapool. 
getting it, get, trying to trying to get it towards the batter's bo uh, body. Just getting uh, it wrong. You wonder if that's the right tactic with this pitch. Yeah. Doesn't show too much pace. The ball's sitting up, and it's giving the batsman time to have a full flurry of shots at it. Now that's down to third man, and it will go all the way. The first maximum of the innings. Just too much width offered by Swanapool and Moon Sammy. Well, he's thrown his bat at everything since he's got to the pitch, and he's raced to 21. 34 for one, the Titans. Moon Sammy not going to go down wandering. He's going to play, he's playing a blind over in innings at the moment. Well, they say attack is the best form of defense. Swanapool again. It's got to be a lot straighter. Oh. That's a better delivery. As Moon Sammy trying to fend that ball off. That ball just sat up at him, but he's still in conjunction with Pretorius at the other end. Steal the single, 35 for one. Just sat up. Looked, at, looked as if Moon Sammy was a bit surprised uh, that, with that one. Looked like it leapt off a length. Oh, the left handed Pretorius facing Swanapool. Has to play away from his body, but he'll find that vacant gap. Won't find the second, though. And all of a sudden, these first six overs of the Warriors are proving to be a little bit expensive. We're still halfway through the fourth over. Remember, six overs is the power play, and then fielders can disperse from within the circle. Only two allowed out in the first six overs. Swanapool again to Moon Sammy. Much better line. You'll concede the single though, but that tucked Moon Sammy up, and all he could do was play it away on the offside for the single. With Moon Sammy going the way he is right now, Pretorius is just going to want to feed him the strike. Two balls to come in the fourth over, and the Titans are going at over nine and over. Well, this will be a worry for Briesky. He's got to try and put the brakes on somehow. And that's full. Try to go down the ground. And all Pretorius has done is mistimed the ball. Got a leading outside edge. And it's looped up to Midoff inside the circle. Takes a comfortable catch. And the Titans lose their second wicket with the total on 37. Again, just... Mistiming that one ball uh, sticking in the uh, sticking in the uh, in the track just leads to a Pretorius getting a leading edge. And a simple catch again. Yeah, dude, he only faced seven balls in, in getting four runs to his name, and in not getting too much of the strike while Moon Sam is going wild at the other end. It's almost as though you go cold. Yeah, and. Correct. Already two down. Will the will the two wickets now? Will the for this full of wicket be a turning point for the for, for the Warriors? <laughs> but yes, one of them with his tail up. One ball left in this over. Well, Swanapool certainly will have his tail up. He, both wickets to have fallen for the Titans under his belt. 37 the total. And Makanya about to face his first delivery. Just thumps it off his thigh guard and it will just be the single. Now that's very good attacking fielding. That man on the long side of the boundary to Makanya's leg side had a long way to come in to attack the ball. The pickup was good, throw good, only the single. A lot of other batsmen would have been looking for two. That's the end of four overs, 38 for two, the Titans. 11 from that one, and plus the wicket. It's amazing how an over can be ruined by a boundary. It would have only been five off of that last over. The famous St. George's Park band. A sparse crowd, can't be more than 1,500, 2,000 people here, but the band still create the atmosphere. Alfred Matoya coming in. Oh, 
the Makanya with that single off the first delivery that he got. Last ball of Swanapool's over. He's now going to be facing Mutaya. Just thumped out on short on that offside. Easy single. You don't mind giving away singles. It's the loose deliveries that good batsmen hit away for fours. That's where the score mounts quickly. Toya taking, Toya taking six wickets this season. Good average of 17.3. This one, some width offered, and it's cut down to the third man boundary, and it beats him. Runs away for four. Too much width on offer, especially with Moon Sammy going the way he is. Now that poor man at that deep third man backward point position, well he's had that white cricket ball flying both sides of him now. Just a, a tribute to Adrian Carter, the groundsman. This outfield here is in absolute perfect condition. Looks like a snooker table. And that ball travels over this outfield so quickly. Once again, off the back foot, squeezed out to that deep backward point. Just the single. With the Sammy again, put rotating strike, as we were saying, coach's dream, getting the boundary and the getting of strike. Kanya now going to face up the two uh, Toa. Uh, Moon Sammy, he's raced to 28. 44 for two, the Titans having won the toss, electing to bat first. Mutawa now, oh that's a teasing delivery outside that off stump and Munsami just playing the wrong line. Beaten, beaten outside, or oh, didn't it look like it uh, was at full pace, may have been, a, may have been uh, Mutawa's change up. Good length, good line, had the batsman reaching, that's what you want. That's two straight. Driven down the ground, Madon in the circle. Fantastic. That was hit too well. Fantastic sound coming off of the bat of Makanya. Very interesting from Matt and Matty Brett, having a short third man and a third man on the boundary. Yeah, well, you're looking for that forceful shot. It's very seldom that it's going to go fine it's going to go wideish that's a good line and length to makanya but equally well played just nudges it out on that leg side allowing the comfortable single so five overs gone titans 45 for two well again just sticking up another change of pace from a tour and this would again beats Batanya, not really under control of that shot, but manages to scamper through for the single. He moves on to three. Munsami has raced to 28. 45 for two after five. Interesting to see that the Multiply Titans winning the toss, deciding to bat first. You, you wonder, in a, in a situation like this against the Warriors, who are top of the log, they dominant in the series so far, you wonder, Winning the toss, batting first, are you trying to set a target and hopefully get a decent target you can defend, knowing that the Warriors have, have got a long batting lineup. They've got men in form. Dangerous tactic, I think. Well, we saw what happened uh, in the previous game. Uh, the, the Warriors just demolished a very good Western Province setup uh, away from home. So uh, what normally happens is that uh, the the team chasing is normally under pressure at St. George's Park. We've seen this season that uh, teams have struggled to chase here. Why? Do you think is that because the pitch maybe greases up with a little bit of night dew? Straight down the ground, it beats that man at a wide mid on, but he's done well to haul it in and restrict the Lions batsman, Makanya, to just the two. I, I, think, I don't think dew is going to be that big of a factor tonight, especially because it's a bit cooler. Uh, it's just been a, it's been a trend recently um, where teams chasing have struggled here at uh, St. George's. 
Uh, you, Even but, day games. And, uh, but anybody will struggle against the Warriors' bowling attack. Yes. That, that's been one of their, their plus factors. Driven Ooh. airborne just past Swanepoel's outstretched arm. They'll get through for the single. That was a, a little bit risky. Driving on the up. Fortunately, just wide enough from Swanepoel. 48 for two, the Titans. Swanepoel, halfway through his third over. No, are they going to, are they, is Manny Bretzka going to bowl him out? Possibly. Those two wickets under the belt gives the bowler a lot of confidence. And He's probably telling Manny Man 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 Bretzka, you're not taking this ball away from me. <laughs> oh. Short ball, try to flick, get underneath it, but... It was so short, it's been called wide. Also a li little bit leg side-ish. Yeah, and as we, as we we were talking about the tennis ball bounce, this one was just too short, and it didn't go over uh, Moon Sammy's head uh, at pace. It looped over his head. Sonapool again, and Moon Sammy down the track, doesn't make contact, premeditated, attacking, Intent from Moon Sammy, but just running down the wrong line. There's two balls left in the power play. Moon Sammy was hoping to get it, was hoping to get on with it and capitalize on that, just missing out. Another two coats of varnish, and that would have flattered into off stump. Uh, power play. What is the par score? Power play. 60, 65. 65. Well, they're a little bit short. The Titans. Well, they won't be short now. That's been clattered away for six. Short side of St. George's Park and full contact made by Munsami and the Titans get their 50 on the board. 55 for two they are. And that was a great attacking shot. Put down, a sitter put down in the crowd. <laughs> Uh, on the short side of the boundary, that whoever was in the crowd, <laughs> that ball would have got to him quickly. 50, they had 50 coming up off uh, 38 balls, two sixes and uh, eight four, four fours. Swanepoel, last ball of the ball of the over, and he's been slashed away oh. straight to backward point on the boundary. Moon Sammy perishes, <laughs> and the multiplier tightens now have lost three wickets in the power play 55 for three they are and moon sammy riding his luck he'd stroked the ball previously into the crowd for six this time a little bit wider clever bowling from swanapool a little bit wider more of an edge found and that ball carried comfortably to that deep backward point on the boundary in fact he must probably had to make two, three meters in to take that easy catch. This is the second time uh, this evening where, following a boundary, the batter has been caught. Going for the same, basically the same shot to, uh, twice in a row, two diff uh, different deliveries. As Neil Grant co joins, uh, come, comes to the wicket, South African test captain for one game. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Baptism of fire for the youngster. He's shown a lot of talent. He's got the goods. Make no bones about it. And they reckon the, long, the, the hardest distance in cricket to get on top of is six inches. Yeah. They reckon it's a six inches between the ears. Everybody's got the talent at this level to be able to play. Yeah. It's how you adapt psychologically in terms of your mentality and your approach to what your purpose is in that batting lineup, what function do you fulfill? But uh, a lot of potential, Brunt, having been on that uh, disastrous sure, tour to New Zealand, and I'm sure he would, that would have been a huge learning curve for him. A huge learning curve, as well as being a stand-up performer on that tour, with, with the ball especially. Well, Sumetu now. From the Duck Pond Pavilion end, and oh, a play and miss. Big, huge shot from Brunt. And uh, that ball just carrying on with the arm. 
see why Sumer, why Makanya rather, not Brunt. We can see why Samet is the leading wicket taker for the Warriors this season. Teasers, but that's too full. Floated up there. It'll just be the single. Deep mid off. Very well placed to restrict these Titans batsmen to that single. St. George's Park, because of the nature of its playing area, a very difficult outfield to run twos and threes. Yes. We now look three back on the leg side. Oh, power play's finished. Now the restriction is just four men inside the circle. Oh, well bowled. Nice and straight. Got a man at uh, a whitish fine leg. Deep mid wicket and a man at long on. Oh, the two men in the circle. Oh, down the leg side. That'll be widened. Yeah. Umpires don't take any nonsense. Anything down the leg side, they're strict. But the, the leg side fielders, you've got a very short fine leg for that little tickle off the, off the pads. And then a straightish mid-wicket. So those are the leg side fielders. Offside, two men in the circle, cover, and a short third man. A lot straighter and just squeezed out, bat and pad, out onto that leg side. And Brunt will get off the mark. 58 for three, the Titans. He's hoping the ball straight, he's hoping the ball straightens it, but he's just trying to loop it onto uh, middle and off lay, uh, middle and off line turning towards leg stump. St. George's Park favours the batsman that hits straight. A little bit too quick. Short down the leg side. Leg bars it'll be. Taking, it, taking that one on the body. <laughs> if you have a look at the batsmen that have got out so far tonight, they've been caught square. St. George's Park, the straighter you try and hit, the boundaries are short. The ball will okay. carry. You'll yeah. get maximum return for the effort. Sumetu again, off the back foot. Slightly risky to a foolish delivery. Squeezed out on the leg side. And if you look at the field, the field settings that Matt, Matthew Breska has uh, put up today, um, that's the end of the over, sorry, seven overs, gone 60 for three. Uh, Matty Breska has been offering uh, the batters huge gaps uh, square of the wicket. We, we see that uh, he had fielders straight, uh, straight in the covers, a short mid, mid on, a short cover. I'm, I'm sure that band, their pitch and, and volume increases every wicket that falls <laughs> yeah. for the Warriors. Staple of St. George's Park. There, there was an umpire once upon a time during a test match that actually got the match referee to make the band stop playing because he couldn't hear Nick's for court behind. Sri Lankan uh, referee. Uh, come on, Damasina. Damasina, it was. That got the match referee to quieten the band down. Shaky King coming into the bowling attack now. Oh, stunning shot off the back foot by Brandt. Taking two. Yeah, Good that running. was well placed. It got past a diving short cover. So the gap was there. Placement crucial. 62 for three now. Kumar Domasima, even though the band had to, Domasina, sorry, had to, uh, he told the band to quiet down the crowd, sure Lady Mavit that day. Oh, they, they, they come here for the band, I think. It's half the atmosphere. A little bit short. Once again, Brunt off the back foot, pushes it out. Quite happy to take a single. Cricket, as long as the, uh, the scoreboard is ticking over, especially before the 15th over, that is what you're looking for. Oh, you, you still need the odd bad ball to go to the boundary. <coughs> because a run and over T20 cricket is, yes. is <laughs> not good enough. That's 120 runs. You par here, you're looking 165, 175. So you need boundaries. Oh, bouncing just short. 
that would have been if they were uh, on one of the more center, central features, that would have been down his throat. This one, uh, since it's the long bound, he just takes it on the half volley. Yeah. Uh, very important that wicket of Moon Sammy. He was the man scoring. And once again, Brunt will just play it out on the leg side, take the single. So a little bit of consolidation from the Titans batsman. Two new batters at the wicket. They're not going to throw a bat at it um, as much as Moon Sammy. Just trying, especially since the slower bowlers are on now. Just try to sneak through a couple of overs and then next thing you know the pressure's on the batting side again. J.P. King darted that one in a bit quicker and it sat up. Uh, not The timing isn't there. You can see Makanya. Since he's got in, it was Moon Sammy that was doing all the hitting, and, and Makanyu was struggling to find his rhythm, find his timing, and he still is. Brunt now facing King off the back foot. That's too short from King. But fortunately, just a single. Now, that's where good batsmen will learn to angle the bat and turn ones into twos. So, eight overs gone, 67 for three. to continue the, 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 the young veteran Sinatembo uh, Keshile just rallying his troops well, it's a full complement of five bowlers that Bretsky has used good length there just worked on the leg side cut off by one of the three men they come back for two good running now the placement there was crucial because you've got those outriders, the fielders out there, on the long side of the St. George's Park playing field. And you've, you've really got to pick your gaps. And uh, if your calling and understanding is good between the two batsmen, comfortable too, as it was there. Good thinking from Brand. It's a major keeping it very straight. Beats the man in the, in the ring. Oh, that was bonus run, that. A little bit of sloppy fielding. So Metu keeping it really straight. He's got the protection and it's the long bound. He doesn't want to give them width outside off stump. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes to Makanya. We can't not keep it that straight. We're going to have to keep it just outside off, maybe on off stump. Force Makanya to play across the line to the uh, across the line and against the spin uh, to the shorter boundary, which is on his leg side. Play straight, young man. Play straight. Does just that as it works it down from easy single down to a long on. Sumatu so busy with his third over. He's gone for just 13. That's why he's been a crucial cog in the Warriors bowling attack so far. All their bowlers have, that's why they're top of the table. A little bit of width outside off stump. Uh, Submit to there. Going in. Stirred over. Going, at four, going for 14. Is building pressure. In T20 cricket. Going in. Oh, that's a fantastic delivery. Needs an outside off stump. They've gone up for a stumping. Well, first of all, the appeal was to the bowler side umpire. Then the appeal was to square leg umpire, so I don't think Kashila quite knew who to shout. <laughs> it could be a situation where Batsman could be out on both accounts. Can you have a look? No. So it's not, out, not even checking. Well, interesting. I think it's more optimism <laughs> from the wicket keeper. Still a fantastic delivery, that one. Brings oh. up the reverse sweep, gets it wrong. Dangerous. <laughs> the right-handed batsman trying to play the reverse sweep. Left arm round the wicket. The ball's always straightening onto the stumps. Dangerous shot to play for the last ball of that ninth over. Multiply Titans, 72 for three. Tanya on 10. Brand on 11. 
partnership is now 17. They're going at 8 and over. Now they've got to build for a while, having yeah. lost those three wickets in the power play. It is a period of consolidation for the multiplier titans, but uh, somebody of the two batsmen, Makanya or Brunt, between them, they've got to decide, right, who must rotate, who must now look to score. And that, that should be the natural tactic. They are going to uh, want to keep uh, wickets in hand for the last five. As Alfred Matoa comes back in, this time coming in from the park drive-in. Park drive-in uh, seems to be the favorite end for the quicker bowlers. Interesting king, just the one over. Oh, and then scoop the straight to cover. And the most placid of dismissals for Brunt and possibly the ball just stopping in the pitch, playing a bit too early and a simple catch to cover. Soft dismissal there. Mogakane takes a comfortable catch and really if you look at the dismissals of the multiply Titans so far, they haven't adapted to playing on the St George's Park pitch. Playing too early, looking to play too square and consequently Four wickets down now, 72 on the board. Just have a look at this. There's the delivery. Back of the length. Plays too early. And how simple is that catch? Off the back foot, not getting on top of it at all. Just feeding, catching practice to the man, uh, Ambedor. I think under 11B catching practice, that's how simple that catch was. But believe it or not, even at test level, those catches, you've still got to concentrate because we've seen easier catches dropped. New batsman, Khalim for Multiply Titans. 72 for 4. Now, this is make or break. Titans don't need a procession of wickets now because they're going to have their backs against the wall. Something clever's got to happen now with these two batsmen in terms of partnership. There's still a whole 10.5 overs left in this match. In other words, not even halfway. The Warriors will be looking to break this partnership and they'll feel they're in business. Oh, straight back to him and he's gone! First oh, ball! Oh, Can you ball. believe it? <laughs> the procession. 72 for 5 and that was a great return yeah. catch. Again, playing too early. <laughs> Dayan Kalim ball just sticking in the sticking in the track, and a fantastic return catch taken uh, by Alfred Matoa. Oh, let's have this is worth looking at again. Matoa, he's already got Brunt out playing too early. Kalim there just plays again too early. Hasn't got himself in, a normal defensive shot would have been required, but how is that for a brilliant return catch? Rolling his wrist there, taking pace off. Corbin Bosch coming to the wicket. Well, how does Corbin Bosch take this innings? Oh, he's gonna does, he, does he swing the bat and, and let uh, Makanya rotate the strike? Oh, he is the last recognizable bat batter yeah. after that the multiply titans have a bit of a long tail well this is crucial period we were just talking about the titans having to consolidate build a partnership still a lot of overs we're not even halfway through the innings yet and there are already five wickets down five for 72 that 160 pass score seems a long way away distant distant Bosch, his first ball. This one, he waits on it, just taking an extra couple of milliseconds just to make sure that he, that, 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 and watches it onto the bat. Khalim should have done, should that, have done with that with his delivery. Instead, eager to play with hard hands at the ball. Change of pace, very good bowling from Matoa. That change of pace, getting the batsman to play early and You've got to take a good catch when it comes your way. Again, playing the full shot. 
refreshing to see Marsh rolling his wrist on that one to keep it down. Well, he knows the man is out there at backward point, but he timed it very well, seeing the ball well, was that ball got out to the boundary very quickly and just a single taken. Fantastic sound made coming off of the bat there. Set up nicely that one. It just work down the two. The good work done at f the third man. Yeah, submit to the fielder. Yeah. Brilliant fielding. And that's it's those little instances. Saving two runs. It looked like it was uh, going for four. Just saving those two runs. You know, T T Twenty cricket is such a crucial match of fine margins. Work to the leg side, they are coming back for the second throw is decent enough. Yeah, well, well placed that. It was in between those two deep men behind square on the leg side. So both of them having meters to make to get to the ball and uh, two easy runs. So half the innings done, 10 overs gone. Multiply Titans having won the toss, deciding to bat 77 for five. Two, five, five runs off that last over, and two wickets more importantly. This is the make or break, as we were saying, this is the make or break partnership for the Multiply Titans. Jaffa Warriors would definitely be looking to break it. Well, when you look at that batting lineup of next to come in, Pangiso, Ngidi, Williams, and Shamsi, you've got to back yourself having your opponents at 77 for five. The Warriors cock a hoop at the moment. 10 overs gone to me to finishing up his quota for the day. Good length, showing some aggression. <laughs> Off the back foot, just darted that one in to me to. You know, when, when the scoreboard's showing 77 <laughs> for five, you, you can't say too much as a batting side. Bosch looking for two again. Wanted the two, sent back by Makanya. Building pressure, building pressure. Jordan Alman firing that one back in. Sumetu, that one a bit more round arm in his action. He manages, but the, uh, Makanya manages to work it down the ground for a, a single, playing straight as we were saying, is the way to go on this St. George's, at St. George's Park. Uh, Similar to just round on, trying to give that a bit more loop, a little bit full, and that'll be another single, just punched off the hip, away to a deepish midwicket, just a single. 80 for five now. Interesting to see uh, Sumetu really backing himself. Uh, Pitching middle and leg with that short boundary on the leg side. Darting into the pad. You know, Sumetu's tail's got to be up. He's almost completed his quota of four overs and he's only gone for 17 runs. Fantastic. Almost used in a, an attacking capacity. Ooh. Oh, looking for a quick single. They'll have to hurry. Bresky has a shy. Yo, oh, that was close. That's the end of Sumetu's four overs. Four overs for 18 runs. Just over four runs and over. Fantastic bowling uh, in a T20. Brilliant spell of bowling that from the left arm spinner. 81 for five. Neelan van Yerden, the new bowler, coming in from the park drive. Eh? Yeah, it's just interesting that the Warriors bowling attack have dominated the Titans so far and that enterprising captaincy from Bresky introducing a sixth bowler. I think with the slower bowlers, just trying to sneak one through. I think Sumetu coming in and sneaking two overs in for very, very cheaply is a stroke of genius. Might be the difference uh, in this game. Well, they're 81 for five, so I don't know if that's going to be the difference. Well, you, you wonder, you know, when, as an opposing side, you, you wonder who you can target. 
Just play it out to mid on, just a single. We shouldn't take the uh, Multiply Titans bowling lineup for, for granted. That's four uh, Proteus bowlers in their bowling lineup. I know Frank Giso, Ngingidi, Lazard Williams, and Tabre Shamsi. Of course, Tabre Shamsi. No, no, it, it, it's not cut and dry that it's a, it's a walk in the park for the Warriors. They're going to have to bat properly. Van Heerden, previously having come from Bloemfontein, played for the Knights. Same as Patrick Kruger, the Knights just feeding uh, the Warriors, just a trip down to the coast for them. Now, what can Bosch do? Looks to play the attacking shot, doesn't get his timing right at all. Watchful now. With the score, with five wickets down, do the Titans decide to put the foot down a bit later than they would, uh, would have if uh, there were only three down? Certainly, have to. Wickets in the bank. Is, is all important in, in when you accelerate your scoring rate and play those attacking shots. But here then in now, this one darted in on leg stump and worked to the leg side. They're looking for two, they'll have to hurry. Oh, Jordan oh. Adamant really attacking that ball from the from the outfield. He gets the throw in on the half body to Kishile. Like the good running from the batters. Now that was almost a direct hit from Herman, but Kachila half and half thought the ball might have clipped the stumps. Then Bosch would have been in big trouble. This one gets a bit of a top edge, and it's caught to the boundary! Fantastic catch! Again, the short ball playing across the line, ball sitting up, and Bosch was very tentative at the wicket, gets the top edge, and it is caught at a uh, fine leg. Motoa with a brilliantly judged catch. Once again, Bosch looking, another Titans batsman looking to play square, gets the top edge, doesn't time it all that well, and it carries to Motoa, who takes a very well judged catch. There you can see the ball traveling and, oh, oh. just inside the rope that is so well judged brilliantly done by Motoa and the sixth wicket falls for Multiply Titans 84 for six they are and uh, a rather disappointed Aaron Pangiso having to come into bat and you think an experienced statesman like Aaron Pangiso would think well maybe tonight I don't have to bat well you've got almost half the innings to bat still and there's work to be done for the Multiply Titans. The Warriors, absolutely dominant at the moment. Aaron Bergiso was hoping he wouldn't have to bat because he decided to bat first. <laughs> hoping that his top order would, uh, would put, up a, put up a stand, maybe face a couple of balls near the end, uh, end of the innings. But Kanya now, just standing on the other end and watching everything go down. Oh, Van Heerden, tail up, one for three in his four deliveries so far this over. And once again, brilliant Warriors fielding, backing up their bowling attack. Uh, that'll be wide, Look, surely. They're appealing for a catch. Uh, that's, that, that, that's the hopeful. <laughs> that's the, that's hopeful the old appeal. trick of the keeper. <laughs> trying to distract the umpire. 85 for six. Of course, we don't have, um, know a DRS. I wonder if they would have gone up. <laughs> With the no, I, I, I think that was the height of optimism <laughs> from bowler and keeper. Tucking him up, dropping it a bit short, tucking him up, they can scamper through for a single. Easily enough. Uh, I think that's all Pangisa can do at the moment. Give Makanya, who's been there an absolute age. He's still at the crease. He's only got 17 to his name. Now, Makanya's between a rock and a hard place. Does he attack? Does he just rotate the strike? Well, at 86 for six, you've got to make something happen. Yeah. Does he go for it or does he tell Pankiso to play freely? But just Lungi Ngidi, Lazard Williams, and Tabre Shamsi to come. Oh. I think they've all got their pads on at the moment. 
enjoying strollers to see who goes. Uh, this one just pulled away, kept yeah. down well enough. Yeah, straight to the fielder, just the one. Warriors won't mind giving a single a ball away at all. 12 overs gone, 87 for six. Batters left in the shed, Lungin Giri, Lazard Williams, and Tabray Shamsi busy drawing lots to see who goes in next. Oh, the man that took that wonderful catch in that over, he'll be coming back for his third. Can't keep him out of the, can't keep him out of the game, taking a catch, taking two wickets in uh, his previous over. Well, if everybody's just believing that they're right on top, it, it's the sort of attitude the Warriors have shown the whole season. That, that, that they're not being cock a hoop about it, but, they, but they, they're just so confident that they are the dominant side. Chucking oh, okay. it's trusting Aaron Pengiso here. The, it's been, a, it's been a, a style of the Warriors play. During the One Day Cup, I had a chat with uh, Robin Peterson. He, he, he was saying that he's got a very young side, or uh, inexperienced side. They were playing against uh, the Tuskers. And uh, he was saying that the, the Tuskers together combined have more games, uh, have played more games uh, than the entire team of the Dapper Bay Warriors. Yeah, you wouldn't think so looking at that log at the <laughs> moment. Warriors sitting pretty. Mutawa looking for that Yorker, just over pitching slightly. Low full toss, also very difficult to get away. 89 for 6. This Warriors, this, the, the Daffabit Warriors also don't have those named stars. But what they do have is they have a team mentality where this team plays for each other. And they will, where if someone is falling short, there are others to pick up, pick up the slack. Well, that's, what, that's all a coach needs. There's 11 people making up one unit. Oof. Oh, and that's uppishly driven through the covers by Makanya, and that could so easily have gone to hand, but instead a much needed boundary for the Multiply Titans. 93 for six. Fantastic looking shot there. Makanya, top of the bounce. Played a bit uppishly, but just managing to get it past that uh, man in the covers. Oh, disappointing for the Multiply Titans, six wickets down. This is when the acceleration should come with wickets in hand. Was they achieving a run rate of 7.4 runs to the over, which in, in T20 cricket just ain't good enough. Matthew Matty Brietzky just having a chat with Alfred Matoa. If he's bowling to a plan, Matty Brietzky also put him moving a bit straighter in that cover region. Uh, once again, solid looking shot down the ground. Always the safest option. Just rotating the strike, getting a boundary, and get off strike. We've seen so many teams around the world, that is what they, do, what, what they look for. Boundary early, early in the over, and then get off strike. Also prevents you from getting a, a, a a rush of blood to your head thinking everything's going fantastic I could throw my hands at anything and get away with it well some days batsmen have yeah. that sort of day where everything just seems to hit the middle of the bat and that's when you just make hay while the sun shines another one down to that third man thickish, just a single thickish bottom edge there yeah, it just shows the ball's not quite coming onto the bat We haven't seen very much lateral movement. Yeah, well, not moving that much in the air, not moving off the deck, straight up and down. We've seen the, the bowlers that are using their variations well, uh, that are being very successful. For example, there, Alfred Matoya, Matoa, just rolling his fingers over that one. Now, once again, restricted to just a single. Warriors are quite happy with that. Matoya finishing his third over. Two for 21 is figures. Multiply Titans having won the toss, deciding to bat. 
Was it such a good idea? 96 for six. You're going seven runs and over, of course, the two wickets. You just wonder what sort of messages come out there with that change of gloves. Maybe coaches now dictating who must stay, who must hit, who should they target in the remaining seven overs as the Warriors bowlers, Bresky will keep chopping and changing, who are they going to target? These are all tactics that certainly dictate the outcome of a game. Patrick Kruger has got three left. One for 16 of them, wayward in his first over. Certainly has options, but Toy's got one. Swanapool has one. Yeah, well, McCon McConya on 25. Yeah. He, he's got to farm the strike, but does he rotate the strike, keep the scoreboard ticking? Does he look for the boundaries? Titans need boundaries at the moment. He should be looking for a boundary of uh, the first two balls of the over aggressively now they'll look for two here because of the pace off Makanya's bat and he's done good well running. that's good batting fantastic running there no man in the circle on the leg side square of the wicket man man on the uh, man of mid on uh. well it's typical the last couple of overs you'll find leg side they will have the boundary Riders, they'll stop the fours because Warriors quite happy to give away the singles and Makanya's clever there because he, he hit that ball not wanting it to speed to yeah. Herman at backwards square leg on the boundary. So the pace of the ball of the bat's important on that big playing area that he could turn one into two. Using very soft hands, getting his angles right. Just one a bit more full-blooded, and it beats Matty Bredska down on the boundary and runs away for four. This is what the Titans were looking for. That also brings up the 100. Uh, 100 on the board. Eight fours, two sixes, 85 balls. Yeah, that was well placed by Makanya, bisecting those two fielders behind square on the leg side, saving the four. They didn't on that occasion. This time getting on top of the bounce, rolling his wrist, keeping it down, not looking to get underneath it and hit it in the air to chance his arm against those men on the boundary. Patrick Kruger not having a good day at the office this far. Off the thigh pad. Oh, that's good, good keeping, good keeping, no extras, but uh, he, he just seems to be bowling the wrong line, wrong length is Kruger. And uh, his figures reflect that nine balls that he has bowled, he's gone for 22 runs. Patrick Kruger also not getting any, as we were saying, no lateral movement tonight here at, St. George, at Dapper Bet St. George's. Patrick Kruger bowling a, bit, bowling a little bit shorter and straighter than he normally does. But work their way to the leg side. They can only take the one because Matthew Gretzka coming around from it on. Uh, you, you just wonder when you've got that offside field, why are you bowling so straight? It would be another thing if uh, Kruger is asking. Um, Makanya and Pagiso to take him on square on the leg side. Now, interesting to see now that Midon is dropped back onto the boundary. Deep mid wicket is brought into the circle. So where is he going? Full and straight? No. Short of a length on the Bluff. Pangiso just defends. Won't stop him getting the single. 104 for six, the Titans. One ball to come in the 14th over. Does Patrick Kruger ask the question of McCann give him some width outside off stump to go for that short boundary? There is a man catching at third man. Ball straight on this pitch, hit the top of off stump. That should be every coach's message to his bowlers. This one short! And takes it on the half volley. Took. Took him on. Oh, that, that, that's not good bowling from Kruger. 14 overs gone, 105 for six. 
But uh, Kruger going for 25 runs in his two overs. You just get the feeling that he hasn't read this pitch very well in terms of what he wants to do with the ball. That he's been too straight, too leg sideish, and too much back of a length instead of trying to draw the batsman forward. Just not getting the movement or any juice extracted out of this pitch. Of course, yesterday in uh, Nebeha, it was a sweltering day, baking down on this wicket. Today has been a bit more damp. The ground staff doing a fantastic job. For Nairden to start his second over from the Duck Pond Pavilion. He'll be going to Makanya. 33 he's got. No. Interesting field for him. The sound that it made coming off of the bat. They come back for the second and safely done. Had to take, bring in the dive there, did Alan Pangiso. Well, that man at deep extra cover, having to make a bit of ground away to his left, allowed Makanya to come back for the second. Van Heerden is definitely not going to bowl too straight. It's going to be on off stump or just outside. Well, that dive didn't help Makanya too much. It, uh, he's all of a sudden suffered a, an equipment malfunction. Also a bit of grass burn. <laughs> Van Heerden is uh, yeah, like, Van, Van going to be very careful dropping it short and body to straight now because the, uh, uh, Makanya would be hitting Makanya and Pangiso would be heading towards the shorter boundary. Yeah, that's just nothing more than a little flick yep. for six. Bats today don't have to get much on it and it will go sailing, especially the bats used for T20 cricket. Well, it's a normal bats, you know, compared to bats of 25, 30 years ago, where bats were pressed hard. Yep. These modern bats aren't pressed hard at all. It allows for the thicker edge with the same weight, same sort of pickup, but they are a lot softer. Yeah. So you've, you've got all that meat behind the shot you're playing, but damage to bats happens a lot quicker and a lot more with the softer bats. But, you know, with, at this level, with various sponsorships, you know, you're getting your bats for free. <laughs> Rather make sure the ball, the ball can go for six. Right, Makanya back in one piece, facing Van Heerden again. Full Ooh. toss, looking for that Yorker length once again. Side off the Warriors, won't mind the singles. Yeah, that, was, that got out to the man at deep extra cover far too quickly. That needed to just beat the man in short, saving one at extra cover. And it would have been a comfortable two hitting to the larger side of the St. George's Park boundary. Covers now come out, dropping a man back to third man. So he's got fine leg and third man back on the fence. And a deep backward square. Mid off coming into the circle. Mid on still back on the boundary. So he's looking to go full. Looking to go full. Does and that appeal. hits him on the pad. I think there's an edge on that. Looked very straight. And no signal of leg by from the umpire. So, uh, Pangisa, rather fortunate getting an edge on that. And will acquire the single. 109 for six. Oh, falling all over, but getting the edge, yes. And yet it Oh, given license to go a bit straight, a lot straighter. Well, oh, that's why the field, the field got changed for that specific delivery. Now it's back to hard length, back of a length. Outside off. Still outside off and on the bounce out to deep mid off. Fielded by Patrick Kruger. And that was really in the arc. That, that was very good captaincy. Just for one ball, just changing it up. Surprising the batter. 
Well, it depends who you're bowling to, according yeah. to what field you set, and what delivery, as a bowler, you're trying to bowl. And geese are back on strike. They're now reverting back to that field from the previous delivery. Full and straight? Must be. Unless it's a bluff and it's going to be a short one as a surprise. Ooh, that's too short. And that's, too, that's too full. Too full on yeah. the full, and it's gone away for no, four. No ball, but waist high. No oh. ball, free hit. Now that's not good bowling. That from Van Heerden. Van having a nightmare of delivery there. That would five, five wides there. And just being spoken to and using the towel that the umpire's got, and you wonder if that seam on that ball is getting a little bit damp and that ball possibly slipped out of his hand. So, no ball, free hit. Same batsman on strike, fielders aren't allowed to move. Can't change positions. Oh, important delivery this. Right outside off. Oh, he'll get away with it. He'll just give away the single. But the extra delivery in the over. Oh, Pangisa to face. Oh, no, Makanya. Makanya to face. So this could be the danger ball. This travels out of the ground for six. All of a sudden, that slipped ball down the leg side, which was a free, free hit, can be expensive. Toe shoes, that's where it's got to go. He looks for that. Uh, that's very difficult to try and hit out of the ground. Just a single. So not too much punishment for Van Heerden as he finishes his second over. One for 17, his figures. Score moves on to 117 for six. Multiply Titans two, de deciding to bat first. Oh, what do you reckon is a good total from here? Five overs left. They're going to have to look for 130 plus minimum. Well, that's, that's only another 13 runs. Five overs, you're looking... At the moment, they're scoring almost eight runs and over. Five overs, that's 40. So you, you're looking at 160. 160 with a bowling attack the Titans have got yep. might be defendable depending on the form of certain individuals in the Warriors' batting lineup. And Maddie Bredsk are coming off a fantastic unbeaten trophy against, uh, the, against Western Province. So that could send a bit of shivers down. Oh, the last time these two sides played each other, oh, it was a <laughs> two-run two game. So don't write off a fair competitive game tonight. Good bowling attack. The multiply Titans have got 117 for six. Deferbet Warriors. Maddie Bredska has decided to take pace off the ball. Now King back into the attack, round the wicket. It's one a flat batted shot down the ground. No, oh, it'll just be the single. Madon back on the fence. King electing to stay round the wicket to Pangiso. Kind of try to force them, to force Pangiso to uh, play to the longer boundary. But Kanya's moved on to a well played 39. He's been there for a while. Now that's the place to hit it. Straight down the ground. We've been saying all along, and Pangiso will pick up the maximum. 124 for six, Was and it? a cleaner hit you cannot wish to have. Fantastic shot, Dad. Lined him up and freed his arms. Beautiful shot. Yeah, no fielders back behind the bowler's arm. Safest place to hit. Goes again. Now, this is a long boundary, Ooh, and it's oh. going to clear it again, I think. Has it traveled all the way for six? Yeah, it has. Yes. Great striking by Pangiso. This one is on the back. I was saying 130. They've reached 130. <laughs> Pangiso playing this one off the back foot and just sending it down the ground. Well, it, it shows, even with the pitch on the one end of the St. George's Park table, that was a good hit off the back foot, and it still cleared the boundary out on the leg side, which is the longer side. 
So batsmen confident they can clear those fielders posted out there by the Warriors. 130 for six. Now, big over this is turning into be. And it, was, and it wasn't just that it was a big shot. He bisected the two fielders beautifully. It's a wonderful placement from Aaron Pengiso. May have sold him short with his batting. This one's cut to the offside. Man cleans up at uh, back, uh, back, backward point, sweeping on the boundary. Oh man, just in front of square there. One of the few, well, the only fielder out on the offside, offside boundary. King again. Two balls to come. And this one beats that man on the offside, runs away for four. Makanya now getting into it. Current partnership has moved on to 51. Good batting, good partnership here. That's a very good shot from Pangisa. Slightly short, and all he did was lean back, gave himself the room out on that offside, and he had to hit it behind square to beat that diving man in front of square on the boundary. And Makanya goes to 43. Mainstay of the Titans batting. The first we pulled out now, and it's straight to the man, that short third man. You know, we've seen how easy it is to score straight down the ground. And here are these fancy shots, premeditated. They come out, which can only result in disaster. That's not quite the right shot at this stage of the game. All Makanya had to do was play one straight down the ground for the single, keep a strike for the next over. 135 for six now, the Titans. Over is expensive, going for 18 there. Four overs to go. 160 is on. Yeah, oh, that's defendable. 160 to 175, we were talking about that earlier on. That's defendable. I think that's the message that's just come from the dugout. Warriors looking to break this partnership. A 50-run partnership, which we could say is against the run of play. Yeah, and it's come in no time at all. Pangisa all of a sudden blossomed in that previous over with those two big maximums. And such an important partnership. Oh, they've got to keep going. Try and give themselves a defendable total. Four overs to go. From Matoa continuing. I think he is finishing up. This is his last over. Going at seven and over, just a bought his run up there. Yeah, a very strong offside field set once again. With the five fielders there. Man and a, a short third man and an extra cover or conventional cover in the circle. Full toss. Dot ball, important. Very important. Gold dust at this point in time, or at this stage of the game, of the innings rather. But oh, again, may, maybe the ball is slipping. Fine, but they're having some problems with the scene there. Rolling his wrist and just... Oh, can only, can only be the Jew. There must be some Jew out there. Oh, the bounces just short of Brietzky. That Almost carried. Pangisa looking to try and play the expansive shot off the back foot. Almost got himself into trouble. If there's a, if there's a new problem and it's, uh, it's quarter past seven at night here in Nebeja, at, at Dapper Bet St. George's, the Titans are going to have a torrid time there. Well, that'll find the big vacant expanse. Coming back, Coming for, the back for the second. They have to hurry. Ooh. Just the throw, just it's not on target. Yeah, Kashila had to move too far to take in that ball and then have a shy at the stumps, which he missed in any case. If that had been more accurate, I think uh, Pangisa would have carried on his dive to the dugout. Not quite sure there. Tried to pull it from way outside off. Now Did Pangiso. Tennis ball bounce. That ball took an age to get to Pangiso. <laughs> Moves on to 26. 
A valuable 26 from the captain. Moving on from 77 for 5 to 135 for 6. And 6 overs. Now, Titans will be very happy, but they've got to keep on going these remaining overs. Now, that's wide, backward square. Good Great good. fielding. Crowd really appreciating that. Come back for three. Well, that's the first Triple. run three of the innings and could only have been done into a vacant area on that wide expanse of outfield here at Daffa St. George's. 141 for six. This is taking on some proportions now. Matthew Bertzka just moving his third man a bit wider. Yeah, well, I think now it's full out play shots at every delivery. Yeah. Again, outside off stump has a bit of a chase at it. Yeah, Pangisa though did move across as that ball was delivered, even though that delivery was slightly wide, it's not going to get called because the batsman moved across to his off stump. That's the end of Alfred Matoya's spell. That's four overs for 27. Oh, good take bowling. It, take it two wickets, two valuable wickets, two wickets and two balls. Oh, I don't think he'll forget that caught and bowled oh. for a while. 141 for six now, three overs remaining. Nailing Panier, and will be bowling one. Probably bowling both of them. He's got two, two in the bag. Uh, one for 18 so far. Did take a valuable wicket. Uh, Makanya, 46 he's got. In sight of a half century. And he's edged it away fine. And that'll get to the boundary, and that is the half century wow. for Makanya. Raises his bat to his dugout. He's played a, a very stable innings. And even though wickets have fallen around him, he's just maintained his pace, and that is a well played half century. Only four boundaries in that half century. Just shows how he has been working the ball around. Oh, 40, the 41 balls he's taken. He did start off a bit circumspect, but he took his time and got in. And he's paying dividends now. Just adjusting the field now. A fine leg coming up into the circle. And it means a man's... Oh, the man hasn't dropped back a third man, so this is going to be short and driven hard. Good stop and by Van Heerden. Hit the wickets. Straight back past him. Luckily, Pangiso was in his was in his ground. Just got fingertips to that one. 146 for six. You also, as a batting side, you have you have mental milestones as well. 150 is one of them. 175 is another. And that'll just give the whole side a boost, achieving those totals. Chasing 10 at a time. This one is doesn't get all of it, but high on the bat, on the splice. Juggled in the outfield. No, there should have been a second there. They should have been looking for two, but Makanya opting to stay on strike. Trying to finish strong are the multiply Titans. Starting to build up a decent score. 13 away from that par that we were talking about earlier. Seems like it, we, once the ball gets soft, it's been harder, not harder to bat, but harder to the bowling team struggled a bit. Uh, I think at, at the interval we'll check on the outfield, might be due there. Certainly looks like it. Just a single out on the offside. Uh, in the block hole, well played there, well dug out, well bowled, good cricket all around. Giso, Giso, the wily veteran on 27. Uh, he's seen it all before, been there, done it, got a cupboard full of t-shirts. 
Definitely, as captain putting his hand up, leading from the front. Spooned out on the leg side, it's in front of square, finds a vacant area, but it'll just be the single. Pangiso won't mind, he's given the strike to Makanya. Now somebody, and preferably Makanya, is going to have to start clearing boundaries. One ball to come in the 18 over. Warriors looking to restrict this multiply Titans innings. In bowling very full. Yeah, just the single. Warriors won't mind that at all. That brings up the 150 for the multiply Titans. Coming in. 114 balls, 11 fours in four sixes, 85 minutes they've taken. Yeah, 11 fours in four sixes, you'd think here at St. George's Park, well it's all credit to the Warriors bowling attack. 11 fours and four sixes are, is not a big boundary count yeah. out of 150. And some of the audacious shots that were played by some of the multiply Titans upper order, playing two square, got themselves out. And I think a lot of batsmen will look in the mirror and think, well, I could have done better. But 150 for six, that, that lifts the side that's going to have to field second. They've got a good bowling attack. Now, two overs remaining. Very important two overs. They are one of all standout star for the Warriors over the past. You see, that's a short, it's bit. No, that, 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 ball, that's baseball. That's a baseball pull, that and was, it's a no ball. Yeah, that was a shoulder high, full toss. The ball obviously slipped. It's going to be a free hit, and all uh, Makanya had to do was just play a tennis smash almost, and uh, strap that over mid on for six. That was that was an absolute freebie. Forehand smash, and now a free hit. Just. Tailing away, the Warriors were in such a strong position. Now that'll be a dot ball. That's a pace on delivery. Makanya, just a little bit too slow to get his bat. Hands weren't quick enough to that line of that ball. Again, just getting away, for, just, just falling away the back end of this inning. The multiply tight is coming back so strong. Very impressed with their, 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 their comeback. Hammered down the ground, deep mid on, will do the fielding and restrict it to just the single. 158 for six. And this is becoming a reasonable total. I think I've clarified a reasonable total. Still not a good total by the Multiply Titans. Makanya's highest, uh, Makanya and uh, Adam Pangisa's highest score of the season. Oh, Very straight, straight delivery, drifting down it's the leg side. No, given. it wasn't. That's given. been given. LBW. Umpire had a long, hard look at that one. You know, Pange guy. Pangisa moving across to the offside, trying to give himself some room, open up that leg side, which is a sort of boundary. And that delivery from Swanapool, very straight. And after long thought, umpire raises his finger much to the relief of the warriors because that partnership was immense for the multiply titans okay. 158 for seven and that's also by swanapool's fourth wicket is it his fourth wicket fourth wicket of uh, the inning now lungi and giri the new batsman to the crease but Makanya, he can be very happy with his effort tonight. A much deserved half century, 60 he goes for. And now, Lizard Williams it is, to the crease. Makanya having a decent season, that's his second 50 of the season. Nine balls to go. It's been sticking around and sword in the middle order this season. Oh, Pangisa. Oh, Makanya still there on 60. Lizard Williams at the crease now. Yeah, new batsman having to face. He drew the short straw <laughs> in place of Lungi and Giri. Yeah. 
4 for 35 for Swanapool. Good return. Busy three more balls of his four over quota. Again, in the block hole, aiming for those toes. Well cleaned up by Kashile. Having to run from the wicket keeper's position. Uh, one run's fine. 159 for seven. Going Eight be, deliveries remain. Going to be interesting. Will they give it to Van Yerden to finish up? Or will they choose uh, Patrick Kruger, who's had a rough time of it tonight? Van Yerden, J.D. King as well. Uh, you wouldn't bring, be bringing a slow bowler on for the last over. Smashed from outside the off stump. And a great catch. Oh. That is a great catch. Almost overran it, and the ball was hit and timed so well by Makanya, it got out to that extra cover boundary area so quickly. And what a catch by Herman! Brilliant catch! He almost slid into it when he realized he was overrunning it and does well to hang on. And another wicket for Swanapool. That's a five foot for him tonight. Fantastic bowling, Sibonela Mokaya. There are, that's so well timed. And just watch Herman. There, oh. he almost overran it, had to dive back over his head. Brilliant catch. Never easy taking that. Makanya can hold his head up high though. End of a very good innings from Makanya. 60 he made, 159 for 8. Now the multiply Titans. One short of that par that we were talking about, but um, an amazing comeback from being 96 for 6 to 159 for 8. Oh, the partnership Pangiso and Makanya was vital at that stage. Swanapool, five wickets to his name, final delivery of his fourth over, an evening he won't forget. Oh, called, oh wide. called wide. You re bowl that one. 160 on the board now. Going to be interesting. Also, we need to we need to also analyze the fact that this is a very rare day night game for at uh, Daffa Betts and George's. No, they're running, turning for the second. It'll be comfortable. Good running there. Well, I'm, su I'm surprised because at the, these new lights, when they were installed, were regarded at one stage as the best in the Southern Hemisphere. They've been, they've been up for a while. For sure the best in the country. Yeah. But they've just been, they've been re they refurbished a couple of years ago, and they were the best in the country. Now I remember the opening of these lights here. What an occasion it was for St. George's Park. And yet didn't to finish off uh, bowling the last over. Uh, now just very carefully changing their field. Well, so, yeah. so it just shows you what sort of line they intend bowling. Because on the offside you've got a, a short third man and a backward point inside the circle. Extra cover, mid off on the boundary. Leg side you've got short fine leg. A man uh, backward of square. Yeah, and then the deep cow, man of cow corner, deep mid wicket. That'll get called wide. You can see that red line is an indication for the umpire to use well, as, an, as a, a wide marker. It doesn't necessarily have to mean anything wide than that. Depends on the batsman. If he shuffles across and moves outside off stump, then that line falls away. So just giving himself a bit of room there. Stop stepping across a wide again, no, bowling in the channel. This is not good bowling. These runs could be important come the end of this game. Van Yerden. Neil and Van Yerden. Just uh, testing the umpire's patience with chasing that wide line. Right. Zod Williams actually did come across two uh, two across, across two off stump. Oh, well, he's batting on off stump at the moment. 
Oh, this oh, one. Swing and a miss. A lot straighter this time. Batting on off stump, you're right. If we see the way the Warriors just handled the ball now, the dew can't be the problem because they're letting, they're letting it roll along, along, along the ground. And normally a captain, if he's cross with his bowler, will do that as well. <laughs> Swung out on the offside, just a single. Williams off it with the get. One sixty-five for eight, four balls remaining. A boundary in one of those four, and then you're looking at one seventy plus. That's easily defendable. It's a very defendable score. I think they'll be very happy with one sixty-five, especially considering the position that they were in. Oh, that four balls remaining. Slower ball bouncer. Oh, the, oh. the run for the bye. And not a very good shy at the stumps by Priscilla. Just a slow ball bouncer there, and they come through for the single running. They're going to be running for everything. The band, what an atmosphere they create. And they don't get tired. <laughs> they have not been quiet this entire. Another swing mm -hmm. and a miss. This entire in the band has been going and going and going and just we lapping it up and we lapping it this side. Two balls to come in this innings. 166 for 80. Boundary important. If you'd said to the multiply titans at the beginning of this game, we'll offer you 170, they would have taken the 170 and run. I'm sure. Just to be across and missing again, right. but they're running on everything. Bit of a mix up. And trying and again, overthrow. turning one by into two. Now this is oh, becoming no. <laughs> becoming a bit of a circus. Now, backing up, not good. The shy from Plachila. And important two runs once again. Just the interesting note, highest total uh, ever at St. George's Park. Uh, chasing to win is 173. Oh, well, this is the final ball of the innings, barring a no ball. And a swing and a miss, they they'll, they'll run. run. And, and finally, <laughs> oh, no. finally. But what he's done cleverly is he's taken a glove off but I think has that stump or bail hit Daniel Williams in the face or hit Van Heerden Van Heerden sorry Van Heerden in the face oh no he finally brushed it off <laughs> oh, he's okay he's depends okay. on that bail would have been flying off and that memories of that horrific injury to Mark Boucher from a bail so the innings will close with the multiply titans having won the toss on 168 for nine. The mainstay of that innings was Makanya with his 60, Pangiso with his 28, and Moonsami with a flash 34 earlier on. Fantastic partnership from, uh, between Makanya and Pangiso really lifted this Multiply Titans team. The Daffabit Warriors falling away at the back end had the Multiply Titans at 77 for five after 10 putting on, uh, doing a very well, putting on 80, 89 runs. And just looking at the bowling figures for the Daffabed Warriors, 5 for 39, Swanapool, he was the star. Two wickets for Mutara and uh, one more for Fenerden. Two wickets in two balls for Alfred Mutara. No, oh, 169 required now by the Warriors. And it's not going to be an easy chase. Looking at the Multiply Titans bowling attack, Shamsi, Ngidi, Williams, they've got some bowlers that can do the damage there. 
It's going to be a very, very, very swan of pool. Achieving the best bowling in T20 cricket, in T20 domestic cricket. Four for beating uh, the four for 16 previously. That's his best bowling in uh, T20 domestic cricket. Getting his first five It's going to be an interesting chase. Um, will, will, will you cut? Will you cut already? No. And uh, we will be back after the in innings interval uh, with the Warriors chase.
Welcome back to St George's Park, where the Titans, having won the toss and deciding to bat from being in trouble at one stage, a very respectable 168 runs on the board. Now it's up to the Warriors to show how good they are chasing. And they've certainly got some very good chases at the crease at the moment. Bretzke and Pillay, left-handed Pillay. He'll be taking the first delivery from Lazard Williams. Bretzky on his haunches at the non-striker's end. Matthew Bretzky coming off of a good 50, a very well played 50 against uh, Western Province in uh, the last game. Just interesting to notice the field placing, no slip. So the Titans thinking that the new ball, no lateral movement, no assistance for the bowlers. It's all going to be on line and length. The offside, they've got a third man inside the circle, backward point, point, extra cover, mid off. And then on the leg side, a short fine leg, a man behind square on the boundary, mid wicket, and mid on in the circle. And, uh, well, it's going to have to keep it tight. Because Pillay and Bretzky in the past have got the Warriors off to rollicking starts that have laid the foundation for their eight victories of the eight games they've played. Unbeaten, top of the log. And uh, they're going to try and keep that record intact. If the wicket continues behaving as it is, uh, as it was in the, during the first innings, the Warriors will try to just play themselves in, these two batters at the crease. Now, we saw a couple of the Warriors bowlers struggling to grip the ball, thinking that there might be dew out there. Now, if that's the case, this pitch will become easier to bat on because the ball will grease on. It won't stop like yeah. we saw early on in the Titans innings where a lot of batsmen trying to play across the line were mistiming shots completely and getting themselves out caught. This, this should be a lot easier playing through the line, hands through the ball, and uh, runs should be plenty. Oh, a little bit of swing through the air back at the left-handed Pelé. Good delivery, that, from Williams. Also, uh, we see Pelé, uh, Lazard Williams, uh, sorry, apologies, Try to pitch it up and make the ball do the work instead of banging it into the pitch like we saw with the Warriors earlier on in, in, in their run. Not trying to also not trying to make the, the Warriors play square. The Warriors will be, the, Pile and Bietzky will be very cognizant of well, he's, not trying to play square, to play straight as much as possible. Well, he's pitching the ball up. He's trying to get the ball to swing and, and that last delivery did move. Although not that much, but it did move through the air. Now, Bresky to face his first delivery from Williams. Good and move. there's the movement. Beaten outside of stump. Fantastic delivery by Lazard Williams. Getting the ball to shape. Moving away from the batter. Trying to bring that slip into play. Oh, fine delivery. As we were saying, this bowling lineup from of uh, the Multiply Titans, four pro tiers in there. Well, it's not going to be a dawdle of a chase. Can't get too forward with themselves, the Warrior Batsman. A lot straighter that from Williams, and a quick single look for Babreski. The shine misses. Good. And Babreski through for a rather risky run. Following through there from that run. Couldn't take advantage of uh, the a bit of a wayward throw. But as we see, Lizard Williams just pitching it up, looking to get the movement through the air rather than off of the deck. Pele now. Two on the board, four deliveries of the Williams over. Short and that goes away from Pele, but also goes away from Pretorius for four buyers. Now that was lateral movement 
a plenty. Moving it away from Pelé in the air and then just hitting the seam and kept on going. A lot of movement there. Oh, rather fortunate that that wasn't called wide. Zod Williams getting getting, getting this uh, this wicket to do some talking. Uh, new ball, hard seam. I wonder how long it will last. Oh, that one back at Pillay. And he finds a thick inside edge. And he's going to get lucky. No, uh, great fielding. Uh, and Bre Breski will come back. Oh, it's been given as four by the umpire. Great. So a fortunate boundary for Pillay to end the first over. Ten on the board without loss, chasing 169 for victory. Great effort there by the fielder. Just slipping a tad and the ball getting away from him. And just going over the boundary. Opening with Lazard Williams is going to be Lungi Ngidi. Proteus Bowler getting his uh, national contract announced earlier this, this month. Oh, best of 5 for 39 in international colours against England. 5 for 39. Now, if there's going to be assistance early on, as we saw from Williams' first over, Ngidi, well, let's see if he can make the ball talk. Going to Bretsky. Bowling from the park drive in the in preferred by the majority of the seamers. Over the top. Favourite shot from Matthew Bresky and it's one of the most difficult shots to play and believe you me that is exquisite just off the back foot throwing his hands at it but off the front foot coming forward to a wide delivery and just letting his hands go through the line of the ball and as we've seen so often over extra cover for six not the easiest shot to play but oh the execution absolutely brilliant from Bresky Bretzky just continuing the form from the other night against the... Oh, he's done it again, this oh. time along the ground. Just beat the man at that good point. Fantastic timing. Again, just pushing at it with all confidence and control along the ground, beating the man and running away for four. Fantastic shot. Lungi Ngiri having a bit of problems here to start with. Oh, trademark batting from Matthew Bresky. He's really matured as a batsman since he's been given the responsibility of captaincy. But he used to play some very rash shots and get out. That'll be wide down the leg side. You know, he used to play these rash shots. Hit, think, thought he could hit everything and anybody through mid-wicket for four. And he, he's matured. He's thought about his batting with the extra responsibility. And he is turning into a star of the future. Really, he, he's got some great shots. Matthew Gretzky really putting his hand up, giving, giving the selectors a bit of a headache. And you can that last ball just overcorrecting a tad. Now drop and run. Clever batting. Rotating the strike, rotating the strike, getting two boundaries off of this over. And that, that's where Matthew Bresky has used intelligence with his batting. He's loved the flashy shots, which he played two flashy shots, yep. brilliantly executed. And there was a case, he didn't need a flashy shot. And, and also on top of it, it's getting towards the end of the over. Yep. He wants to make sure that he, he's taking as much of the strike as possible. As we've seen, uh, Javesh and Pillay just struggling a tad. Matthew Bredsky just taking some of the pressure off of him. Well, those, those wides that Ngidi is bold, he's only halfway through, he's over. And he's already gone for 12 runs. Now to Pillay. Around the wicket. Solid defence there. Now, oh, good confident shot that makes a bowler think when as a batsman you come forward confidently solidly ball hits the middle of the bat even though it goes to the fielder 
No run. But the bowler thinks, oh, where must I bowl that I'm not going to get smacked? Old saying as a batsman, you want the bowler to bowl to you. Try to scoop it round on the leg side. It's got tucked up to Pelé, but enough and clever anticipation from Breski, the non-striker's in, coming through for the single. Backing up very well. Pelé also getting, having a very good season, but it also helps that you have a Matthew Breski at the other end who can take the pressure off of you and allow you to get yourself in while he's playing with freedom. Uh, I think if you look at the, the averages of the, of the Warriors so far this season, you know, in the, top, in the top five, there are four Warrior batsmen. So, you know, success breeds success, and that's why they're sitting at top of the log. Oh, oh delicate, delicate, fine, but it'll get cut off. But Bretsky will come back for the second as well run. That, now, that's clever thinking, cricket. Beautiful running there. And such soft hands to just guide it down to third, man. That's the end of the second over. 25 for no loss. Matthew Gretzky on 14 and Javeshin Pile on 5. Well, ideal start for the Warriors. In, the, in this Might. power play, in, in this power play, try to bring the, get, get as far ahead of the run rate as possible so that you can consolidate and make the chase a bit easier. Williams, it will be from the Duck Pond Pavilion for his second over. First over, having gone for six to Pillay. Now we saw movement through the air and off the pitch from Williams's first over. Let's see how quickly this ball goes soft. Uh, it's well defended by Pillay. Nothing he could do with that. Ball coming. No ball, free hit. Oh. Well, that's what you don't want to do, is give away free shots and free runs. That's over, Lizard Williams overstepping. The two no balls and the free hits uh, during the multiply Titans innings came from a ball, uh, full tosses above waist high. Just having a look at the umpire there, he was pointing at one of the fielders in the circle. Oh. Did, did he pick up that one of those fielders on the offside hadn't made his way into the circle by the time the ball was delivered. Was there are two men out already? Oh, oh no. free hit. It's not going to count. Rather ambitious <laughs> that from Pillay had his stumps rearranged. But interesting, I think that no ball free hit was because there were three men outside the circle. That, if that is the case, that is very, very poor cricket. From the multiply Titans. And Pillay. I, I, I'm sure if it wasn't a free hit, he wouldn't have been playing shots like that because he was all over the place. Nice straight delivery from Williams. Williams again. And finds a gap, does Pillay behind square. Just over pitched, the width was there. Pillay. Also made space for himself outside that off stump. Gave his arms space to free themselves and beats a diving backward point. This man can play and once again, Warriors off to a great start. He's throwing his hands at it, playing a square drive right out of the textbook. Yeah, brilliant shot. Interesting, the, the, the free hits this evening have only conceded two runs. A lack of capitalization by the batters. Oh, that's a stonker of a delivery. An appeal goes up. It's given! <laughs> Pillé can't believe it, but oh. he, he points his bat at something on the pitch. But uh, he stood there. Maybe he was trying to fool the umpire in, in, into thinking that he hadn't nicked it, but the umpire wasn't fooled. And Pillé... Nine runs to his name, makes his way back to the change room. He's going to need a tractor to get him off the pitch, he's walking so slowly. But I think he's disappointed whether he nicked it. Surely he must have felt it if he'd nicked it, but he didn't look like he was too happy with the decision. 
But he's got to go. Gile Mohakane making his way to the wicket. Just let's have a look at the replay. Ooh. Oh. You see the way Pele behaves. Plays the shot, looks down. Normally a giveaway is, is if a batsman immediately turns his head and follows the ball because he's felt it. But that, oh, Pele might consider himself unlucky. Well, the Warriors are one down. The Titans are jubilant. They've got their first wicket. 30 on the board, the Warriors. It was a very... Vesh and Pile looking so bemused at that decision. Mogakane, the new batsman in. So two right-handers. That'll make it easier for the multiple Titans bowling attack because they won't have to cope with the left-hand, right-hand combination. And one immediately, a slip goes in, short fine leg, deep backward square leg, mid on. So off stump line attack from Williams. Only third man out on the boundary, the rest in the ring. And Leading off the edge. Down to third man. And they come through for the single. Mokakane also coming off, also having a great season thus far. Bretsky, he's watched all the drama from the non strikers in. Bresky, St. George's Park favourite because the band immediately picks up a notch. And Bresky to face Williams. Yeah, well played, carefully, just opens the face of the bat, guides it down to third man, totally under control, Bresky. The relief, the relief shot in limited overs cricket, just guiding it down to third man, taking the single. Rotating the strike, I think that's going to be the big issue now while Mohokane is still new at the wicket. Just give him some time to play himself in. Rotating the strike, keep the scoreboard ticking, don't get bogged down. Create a partnership. Correct. We saw how Multiply Titans changed their innings just through one partnership. Going at 11.3 uh, 11 and over so far. Ah. I'll play through the power play. Williams, attacking field set now. Second slip coming into place. So looking for wickets are the Titans and Williams. Ooh. And there is some movement through there. That's very well bold to finish the over. The 32 for one. And that's the end of three overs. Zod Williams showing that there is levels to this. Getting the get, extracting movement in the air and off of the wicket, looking very dangerous. Of course, picking up their wicket in uh, the over. Dayan Halim replacing Lungi Ngidi from the park drive-in. Oh, he'd like a repetition of his best bowling figures. Four for eleven, Halim. But he's going to have his work cut out. Bresky, top form at the moment, coming off successive half centuries. Now, how does Bresky try and protect the new batsman? He'll still play his attacking shots if it's there to hit. Taking on short third man, yeah. direct hit, but well backed up. Good backing up from Mohakane coming through, making his ground. Who's going to get cut? Okay. Did he finish? I'll give him a Once again, intelligent batting from Bretsky. Just runs a single down. Mogopane. One to his name, but he got a beautiful delivery from Williams the previous over. Swung through the air, so he'll be uh, doubtful in his own mind as he faces Khalim. 
and very intelligent cricket. And I think more control from Bretsky, because the moment Mogopani had dropped that ball down the offside, Bretsky was off and running. So controlling the situation, that's what's making Bretsky bat so well this season. Controlling the situation, backing up well, Kind of just squared up a, a little bit you know, with that previous delivery. Bresky giving himself room on the leg side. Khalim decides to follow him. Clever bowling. He'll just be the single though. Good rotating of the strike by the Warriors. Mohakane averaging 39 this season, highest of 73. It's amazing the difference Matthew Bredsky makes just taking pressure off with his batting partner because he's in such good form. He's a thinking captain and cricketer and batsman. Oh, once again the quick single and Bredsky benefits from the fumble, from that diving pickup throw. Putting the fielders under pressure now are the batsmen. Just a different form of pressure, not just scoring boundaries freely, but actually making sure that the, you, you're awake in the field. Because every now and then as a fielder, you can just doze off. Bresky. You can see just the previous delivery he faced, moving his feet outside leg stump. He wants to give himself space. Down the leg side, Khalim trying to follow him again. Concedes the wide. Matthew, uh, Bresky moved uh, towards leg side, gave himself some room very early. Oh, he's trying to free, that's, that's his strong area. That point round to mid off. In the air, along the ground. So he, he tries to give himself space outside the next time so he can free his arms. And if the bowler fo follows him like he did, he's going to give away a wide. Once again, Bretsky moves to the leg side. But Khalim in clever bowling. Khalim stuck to his line and length, left it outside the off stump, and Bretsky had moved too far away from the line of that delivery. Bretsky targeting the short boundary on his offside. Salim sticking to his gun, sticking to the process. Will Bredsky give himself room again? Oh, he's looking to hit. Yeah, and misses. Very good over that from Khalim. Just the five runs. And Bredsky, that doesn't help his Saki playing and missing. He likes to feel the ball coming out of the middle of the bat. So four overs gone. 37 for one, the Warriors. Chasing 169 for victory. Needing 132, 132 runs, 96 deliveries. Towards the end, of Matthew, towards the end of that over, Matthew Gretzky just trying to. It seems like he was just trying to do too much. Well, trying he, to he, force the issue. He wants to feel bat on ball. Yeah. That's that's the the makeup of the young man. And when he does get bat on ball, it flies high and wide. So Williams to bowl his third over. Play and a miss again. This is good bowling from Williams. Just a little bit of swing away from the right-handed batsman. Williams looking very dangerous. Just has been troubling to the Warriors batters the entire time he's had the ball in hand. Once again, another play in this perfect line and left from Williams. Now you just wonder, why didn't we not see any of this lateral movement from the Warriors bowlers? I think what do you reckon? Different kind of ball, different kind of delivery? The, the warrior, the, the first, the, during the power play, the Warriors weren't bowling as full, trying to look for the swing. They were banging it into the pitch, short of a length, trying to force the uh, 
multiply Titans bad is to play a lot squarer instead of uh, trying to force the issue. They're coming back for the second. Very That's good, good running. Very good running from Mogopane. It had just beaten the man at slip, so there was r space to make for the third man on the fence. And uh, two runs there. Once again, intelligent, thinking running. Turning ones into twos, all the difference. That's odd. Williams might feel a bit aggrieved there. He did everything. We pulled a peach of a delivery, squaring up Mokakane. Mokakane and he managed to get two from it. That's a better shot from Magapani, unfortunately finding the fielder. But you can see, just over pitching slightly, Williams, but he giving himself a chance for that ball to move through the air. Yeah, the, the Warriors gave, the Warriors ball is definitely pulled it, um, I think, a, a yard or two too short, first up. And the ball is just sitting up, sitting up. And now, as we were saying earlier on, the ball's going to skid, might just start skidding through as, as the night goes on. Yeah, I think you're spot on. It's a, it's a different length that the multiple Titans bowlers are bowling. And once again, a good ball, which a bowler, nothing makes a bowler more maddened than bowling a good ball and the batsman just drops it at his feet and they run one. Good understanding between Bresky and Mogapane, but oh, frustrating for a bowler. Are you expecting a dot ball, and instead you're conceding runs? 44 1. And fast bowlers are grumpy enough already. <laughs> and then bats, the bat is just sneaking singles and twos. Oh, it just adds to the bowler's frustration, and then they try and do different things which they shouldn't be doing and that's when they can see the runs oh that wasn't uh, too good a shot that by Bresky. just having a swing there it, i think right now he's missing as we're saying missing ball on bat at the same stage the more after five overs the multiply titans were 45 for two oh, 40 for one which you know, wickets in hand, and I think that's where the Warriors have been successful this season. They've very seldom have they given a whole basket full of wickets away in the power play. But uh, that wasn't a very good shot from the captain. You know. He'll be fortunate that he didn't get a nick on that because uh, he was trying to hit somewhere over mid wicket to a ball six inches outside off stump. So, Khalim again. Dab yeah. to the offside. They're uh, taking the chance for, uh, against short, the short, short third man fielder. Well, he, he's so deep on the circle yeah. that there's always a run to him. If the batsman of the non strikers end is backing up, there'll always be a run to the man on the edge of the circle. And he's, he's worried about the one delivery that the batsman runs off to his left, fine. Yeah that might got run away for four. And if you're too close, you're not going to stop it. There, once again, always a run. Clever batting. Your, your age group cricket coach would, would say things like, are you there to stop one or are you there to stop four? And uh, him being in the ring, he, sh he would genuinely say that he should be stopping the one. But as you mentioned, it, but there is a slip in place. Now the slips only just come in yep. now for Mogokane. Trying to plug that gap where they're getting that single to short that man the entire time. Oh, well, they're not going to stop that. That's two bounces in the way for four over mid off. Very good, intelligent cricket from Mogokane. The ball was there to be hit, the length was there. And all he did was just let his hands go through the line of the ball. And, and again, playing straight. Playing, as we say, playing square at the George's Park is difficult. And tends to get the batters in trouble. We saw with the multiplied Titans. 
the majority of the wickets that were uh, majority of the wickets were from playing shots square of the wicket. Khalim tries again. Khalim goes again. Just a single. Rotate the strike. Boundary single. Boundary single. You're going to win a lot of games with that sort of philosophy. 47 for one. Two balls to go in this the sixth over. We have to remember at this stage, a revolver moon semi was going well. Matty Bredska and Mohokane are just, they're batting within themselves, it seems. Matthew Bredska just trying to be a bit more expansive. Oh, that's gone high into the night sky. Has it got enough on it? No, yes. no I think it's over the boundary. That'll be six. There's the indication from the umpire. And Bresky taking on the longer side of St. George's Park was very lucky the fielder didn't stay within the field of play. It's gone high into the night sky. Coming down with snow on it. Makes the catch and then collects it over the boundary. Brings up the 50 for the Warriors. The last one last delivery remains in the power play. 53 for one of the Warriors. Bretzky hitting out. And that's good bowling from Khalim. Bretzky once again giving himself room outside that leg stump. And Khalim follows him. So the end of the power play, 53 for one. Bresky on 24 and Mogokane on 10. Just again, Matthew Bretzky getting hold of that one, but the boundary being so big. Managed to find the field that would have been six any other time. One, one of the advantages of batting second is you're chasing a total. You know what total you need. You know what the required rate is. And at the moment, the rate required is 8.3, and the Warriors are batting at 8.8. .8. Mm -hmm. So quite comfortable. There's no too soon to panic, no yeah. need to panic, as long as you stay within that range of yeah. about two, three runs maximum of that required rate. And you've got wickets in hand. Well, then you've managed your innings very well. Adam Plank so, coming in to the attack now. Now, how often do we see that end of the power play? The it's spinners brilliant. come into it. Pangiso to Mogokane, off the back foot, and that's a chase for the man wide out at not gonna extra make. cover. He's not going to get there. Boundary for Mogokane, not the best start for Pangiso, and runs flowing now for the Warriors. Pangiso just just dropping that a bit short and offering some width. Hakane rocking onto the back foot and cutting well. It just shows a, a bit of concentration and consolidation. Now all of a sudden the arms can get freed and the, all of a sudden that run rate climbs. Just taking a bit of time to just analyze the situation, analyze the, analyze the wicket. Instead of going hard from ball one, is sometimes what's needed, even in T20 cricket. Oh, especially here at St. George's Park, where you're not going to get those quick, bouncy, super sport park or wanderers type pitches. You just need to play yourself in one or two deliveries. Oh, nicely tickled around the corner for the single. Get Matthew Bresky on strike. Also helps that you have Matthew Matty Bredsky on uh, batting with you. He does take a lot of pressure off of uh, his batting partners because he will go, he'll, he will bat a lot uh, more freely, and he'll give you that confidence so that you will have a couple more balls to just have a bit of a look. Once again, Bresky setting himself up outside leg stump. Well, almost trademark of his setting himself up, up outside leg stump. So he's 
opening up the whole of that offside for himself. And he does it so early. So that already puts the bowler off. Well, a good bowler will just follow him. Should follow him. Well, kind of dancing down the wicket. Uh, full of confidence. This is a, a very good partnership already. 30 runs on the board. Seven overs gone. 60 for one. Warriors just consolidating well. They had a great start. And again, as you said, keep it within one or two runs. That little chap batting, he'd be better off watching Bretsky. Oh, he's, <laughs> made, he's made room for himself outside the off stump, or the leg stump. But he'd be better off uh, taking a couple of hints from a master <laughs> at the crease. He doesn't have much option on the offside. The ball's right next to him. Oh, testing time now. Six overs gone, power play finished. All of a sudden the Titans bring on two spinners. Brand it is from the park drive in. Neil Brand can always say, I'm a former South African test captain. Oh, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> he's still a youngster. He's got a whole career in front of him. Oh, he's not going to get that one through. There's Mogapa Kane. Yeah, it has been earmarked by CSA. He's currently uh, going to be captaining uh, SAA going forward. Yeah, I think it's just a, a nature of the, the, the fixture clash that they had. And it's certainly given some younger players exposure at that sort of level. And hopefully they've learned great deals and, and it helps. In, in launching their careers a lot sooner than just sitting around playing domestic cricket. And Brand being one of them. Useful player, useful spinner. But he's going to have to have his wits about him to Bretsky. Offside square in the ring is very packed. Oh, has Bretsky given it away? He has. He's given it away. One man at deep mid on. And a shortish delivery from Brand. He's pulled straight into his hands. And how often have we seen Matthew Bresky get out like that? Oh, that's a big wicket for the Titans. <coughs> the Warriors. Whoa. That's a big loss for them. Matthew Bresky, 25 off of 13. But the info man. Jordan Herman coming in, another batter for the future. Matt, Matty Bretsky there, ball dropped short, his eyes lit up. Well, just have a look at this delivery from Brunt. It's short enough, Bretsky anticipating it on the back foot, and there's one man out there, 10 meters either side not. of that fielder, and it's away for four, but he's picked him out perfectly, and uh, that's, oh, to give you a wicket away like that. 61 for two now, the Warriors. And all of a sudden, the spring and the step of the Titans fielders. Three to come in the eight over. The Titans were, were Neil Brown really lifting the, the spirits of the Titans. The left-handed Jordan Hadman facing. His brother is actually the highest run scorer this season in the SA20 competition, SA T20 challenge. Oh. The Hermans can bat. Make no bones about that. Coming from northwest. Oh, and a play and a miss first up. Possibly anticipating a little bit of turn. Playing inside the line. Fortunately, not getting the edge on that. Good bowling by Brunt. Oh, what are you trying to do? Reverse sweeping, second ball. Your side needs you. The exuberance of youth. Mohakane should actually be having a chat with Jordan Hadman, just saying, just take a couple of balls, relax, we'll figure it out. Well, Hadman's another one that likes to feel the ball out of the middle of the bat. Oh, 
pushed away and they'll take the single. Just struggling, oh. struggling with his timing, they're not getting. That was such a good over from Brunt, the big wicket of Matthew Bresky, and he's conceded just two runs. 62 for two, the Warriors, needing 169 for victory. Jordan Hanman retaining the strike, facing up to Aaron Pangiso. Again, very square, the guys on the offside. Tons of room on the leg side. Only one man in the circle on the leg side. That's a short, fine leg. Oh, well, that sort of line, that leg stump, those two men behind square on the offside, it's not likely that the ball is going to get cut off a Pangiso delivery to that area. So you can afford to have them up in the circle. Don't need boundary riders. Different story now to Maga Kane. Oh, well bowled. Wally old foxes, Pangisa. Been around for a long time. Just that one was a bit slower in the air, just looped a bit. Maga Kane just coming forward and pushing it to the offside. Oh, once again, changes his flight and line, Pangisa, the experience. Coming around, a, a bit of uh, rounder, rounder arm action, that one. Got, ducking it into the body. Yeah, good fielding. Showing his vari variations, that one a bit flatter. Skidding on a bit more. Oh, that's a better shot. Uh, just be the single. Deep Milof was there in a flash. 64 for two. Now all of a sudden the required rate, with the fall of that Bretsky wicket, the required rate's climbed up to 9.4 runs the over. Uh, they've got to keep an eye on that. Oh, clever batting from Hermann. Coming back for the second. And that is really good running. Because that was barely outside the 30 meter circle and they ran two. Very good running, trusting the partners, trusting each other. That's the end of the ninth. Score 66 for two. Another good over, only four from it. And the pressure continues. The former number one bo T20 bowler in the world, Tabray Shamsi, coming on. Just no let up in the pressure from the multiplied Titans. Uh, he's always had a mystery about him. Batsmen struggle to read him. Being a left arm leg spinner. Yeah who can bowl that wrong one with, with almost identical delivery. Very difficult to pick up. And he's had so many batsmen around the world in trouble. And he goes now to Maga Kane from the park drive-in. Oh, a little bit too short. No danger in playing straight here at St. George's Park. The pressure of a leg spinner. Always, always just hovering around in your mind. You know, it depends what role that leg spinner is going to play. Is he a defensive leg spinner or an attacking leg spinner? Uh, once again, Herman trying that fancy reverse sweep. Personally, I have a horrible relationship with the sweep shot in general. Yeah. 
decades ago, the coach would have thrown you out of the nets if you dared play a shot like that. Now, it's acceptable to practice the shot. And if you practice it, why not play it in a match? The only problem I've got against it is some batsmen tend to premeditate it. Yeah. They don't pick the length to play it at. They, they set themselves to set themselves too early. Well, it's premeditated yeah, yeah, yeah. that they're going to play it. And they, that's when they get themselves into trouble. 68 for two. Mago Kane on strike. Three balls away from halfway mark in the Warriors innings. And there's some work to be done. Oh, big swing and a miss. That's the speed that Shamsi generates off the pitch. Very deceptive. Shams, you're definitely one of the more attacking leg spinners. Not a very attacking field that, that, that Aaron has given him, though. It's, you know, what line, what length are you going to bowl? And then you set your in-out field. Men out catching because you're going to get hit in those areas. Good use of the feet. Oh, turn but, quickly. Oh. Mago Kane wanted to, not going to get. That's good fielding from the Multiplier Titans. Mago Kane just being asked to play around uh, to his leg side. Last ball of the Shamsi over. And that surely must be wide. wrist spin is always going to get more turn than a finger spinner and that certainly did turn but it started off on the wrong line and just went wider Again. Oh. eventually he's going to make contact with one of those <laughs> much to the frustration even the band's gone quiet <laughs> because of those sort of shots 70 for two 10 overs gone Halfway through the chase, 169 needed by the Warriors. At the same stage, the Multiply Titans were seven runs uh, better. They were se at 77, but there were three wickets uh, to the worse at 77 for five, and they really turned it around in the back end of the final 10. Oh, it was that seventh wicket partnership that allowed them to create their total. Warriors now need 99 off of 60, off 61, I think. 60 deliveries, yeah? 99, yeah, off 60. Well, I think the scoreboard is a, a delivery behind. Single no. now. Magakane on strike. Neil Brand just Neil Brand. changing ends. Brand changing ends. Eventually the scoreboard catches up. Brand with figures of one for two. Big appeal. Uh, has he appealed for a stumping? Because that did look wide. There is the sign and the signal from the umpire that it was wide. The bales were taken off. Just, Brand just darting that one down leg side. Mokakane thinking he had a freebie there. And Pretorius, Pretorius is not going to get much joy out of the umpire. <laughs> Mago Kane, where does he try and hit this one? Oh, he just bottom ends it off the end of the bat, over cover. The spin almost does extra cover, who's flying in. And Mago Kane will get two. Just overran that one a little bit and it got himself in a spot of bother. Oh, that was a hoik across the line. Well, 
bring the single. A nice forehand there if we were playing tennis. Cross court forehand. Got the single down to long on, long off. Well, in front of square, three men on the leg side. Oh, the man at square leg just going behind, coming sort of five meters in off the rope. Clever batting from Herman. He's nudged out of the leg side with enough pace to just creep outside that 30 meter circle a long way for deep extra cover to come in. And he's back for the second quite comfortably. That Good was, running. That was a very mature shot from Jordan Herman. New Brunt just ran just tempting him to go for the big one and take on that boundary. Oh, lots of flight. Clever bowling by Brunt. He, allowed, he just held that one back with a bit more flight. Herman almost knocked it back to him. That's a, a wristy hands through the ball shot just for the single. Good over that from Brand. One for nine, his figures after two over. 77 for two. And that required rate now climbs above 10. First time it's reached that. Not really panic stations just yet. 10 and over in modern T20 cricket isn't anything to worry about. No, I, th I think the main thing, only two wickets down. Yeah. With wickets in hand, they, can, they have a solid platform to go for it. Obviously, the Warriors don't want to lose their unbeaten record this season. Some of the suites open. Spectators enjoying what should be a very good finish here at Duffer Bet St. George's Park. Shamsi again. Oh, still doesn't make contact, does Herman. This one just goes between the keeper's legs and they manage to sneak through for a single. He's played it about five times already and hasn't made contact once. And we know that he's a better player than that. Ooh. There's a very good shot straight down the ground and it's out of here. Put a stamp on it. It's gone air mail. Out of St. George's Park. Third umpire, boxer balls, please. That was a fine strike. And again, playing straight. It's a short, straight boundary. The Breshansi just giving it some air. Mohakane is like, enough of this. And he smashes it over the Grain Pollock Pavilion. Well, somebody's gone and retrieved the ball. It's made its way back. Is there more punishment for Shamsi? Down the ground, along the ground. Okay, single. Very good cricket. 84 for two. Now all of a sudden a big shot like that. The required rate was up in the tens. It all of a sudden it's down to 9.9, 9.8. It just shows you one single shot can change things so quickly. It's and a bit of hesitation from Margot well, Kane, and they're coming back for the second because the direct hit deflected away, so they're going to get two leg bars. Now, I think that's been discussed at length during the, the South Africa 20. Yeah. That a deflection from a throw for a run out, the ball becomes because dead. Yeah, they've, they've changed it back, so a second leg bar was received by the Warriors for that deflection. That's Much a better shot from Herman. One's enough. Not trying to manufacture anything, playing a proper cricket shot and, just, and getting a result, rotating the strike. Jordan Herman trying to force the issue not looking that, looking very uh, circumspect Whoa. at the wicket. 
Maga Khan is the senior partner out there. He's got 30 to his name. He's already hit Shamsi out the park. Uh, Maga Khan gets himself all mixed up. And that's the end of 12 overs. 88 for two are the Warriors, needing 169 for victory. The men out, Pile and Bretsky. Pile for nine, Bretsky for 25. Kind of looking all at sea there. Would be remiss uh, to uh, not mention uh, that our thoughts are with Graham Pollock and his family uh, having a bit of a health issue at the moment. As we see the band who have gone a bit quiet, maybe taking a breather. Nope. Uh, some running repairs by Magokane to his equipment. Normal service resumed. It'll be Brunt to continue. One for nine is figures in two very economical overs. Big wicket of Bretsky. Oh, finally makes contact as Herman with a reverse sweep. And that is, that'll do his confidence a world of good because he's got a boundary to boot takes the Warriors total up into the 90s. 92 for two. Finally getting the reverse sweep to come off. Boundary off the first ball of the over. That is what any team chasing will look for. But changing his angle. Oh, wide of a diving extra cover, the short boundary, and it's away for another boundary. And there's Magukani thumping his glove into his back because those are the boundaries they need. Jordan Hellman <laughs> just showing that he can play proper cricket shots. I think him getting back to that reverse sweep just got it out of his mind. And now he just rocks onto the back foot and smashes it through extra cover for four. Well, he gets going. He can change the outcome of a game very quickly. Down the ground, a lot of flight given by Brunt. It'll just be the single. Sanity prevails. All of a Nine sudden, runs off the over so far. All of a sudden, as we, as we were talking about, Jordan Hammond looking a lot more comfortable at the wicket. Oh, that's a swing across the line, fortunately along the ground. It'll just be the single, good fielding out at deep mid-wicket. On the short side, mid-wicket boundary, 98 for two. This is a better over for the Warriors, off the bowling of Brunt. Herman now, what tricks he got up his sleeve. A gentle nudge out onto the leg side, and they won't come back for the second. Hit that just a little bit too well. Uh, at least he's middling them now. Really struggled to begin with. And I, I think a lot of it had to do with his shot selection. Yep. He, he was playing the wrong shots to the wrong sort of delivery. 99. Does this bring up the 100? It will. The 100 on the board for the Warriors. At the end of the 13th over. They've still got some work to do. 10 runs and over they need going to be a fantastic a great chase it's going to be very exciting unlimited energy they just never stop dancing it's getting a bit nippy winter's on its way here in Kabaka. it's nippy typical autumn it was baking hot yesterday now the clouds have come in. Yeah, somebody left the fridge door open today. So those batsmen out there for the Warriors, they've got to stay hot and on top of their game. They need 69 runs to keep their unbeaten record in this Cricket South Africa T20 Challenge. 
69 from 42. Corbin Bosch coming into the attack now. Yeah, eight wickets in hand. There's no reason to panic. Still below 10 runs and over required. When it starts to get into 12, 13, then you, you really got to have somebody hitting the ball to all parts. But at the moment, two batsmen in. Mogokane on 32. Gets a short one. It'll just be the single to mid-wicket. With it being the 13th over, it's going to be interesting if they're going to let Kashile, who's not known as a big hitter, he's more of a Niger and a nerdler, come in next, uh, as opposed to Patrick, uh, Patrick Kruger, who we know can hit a long ball. Oh, it, it makes sense that you send your hitters in, let them hit, and you've got a nerdler and a needler, let him have to do a job yeah. towards the end of the innings if it is needed. Yes. No, that would be the tactic now. Send your big boys in. Let them hit the ball to all parts of the ground. Because it, it's a delicate chase. Mm. You, want, you want to break the back of that chase as quickly as possible. I think the next target they're going to be looking for is to get that uh, target below 50. Bit of confusion oh. there. Oh. had come a long <laughs> way out of his crease. And uh, with Herman hitting that ball sweetly straight to the fielder, the shy, fortunately for Maga Kane, missing the non striker stumps. If you think about it, 10 minutes ago, Jordan Herman couldn't middle anything, and now everything is just finding the middle of the bat. Uh, but he must get some boundaries. Oh, this is high, oh. down to third man, the outside edge. And all of a sudden, the fielder down at third man, I think possibly that ball might have come out the lights because yep. it looked as though he was charging in to make it into a catch and then suddenly gave up on it. Just giving the signal there. Yes, he lost it. In, it seems like he did lose it in the lights. Just fell, fell short, like oh. two meters short of him. He gave up. And these LED, these new lights here at St. George's are bright. And there's an appeal for catch behind Bold down him. the leg side. No, oh, Mokakane has been bowled, just flicking the, oh, flicking the bail. Has it bowled him or is he caught behind? So it's bowled, bowled him. him. So that must have just flicked the leg stump bail as he moved across yeah. outside off stump. Oh, bonus wicket that for the Titans. Man, man that's in and set. Magakani has to go caught Pretorius, bold Bosch. So he was caught. He must have just got a feather of a glove down the leg side to it. And the third wicket falls for the Warriors with a total on 102. No, let's have another look at this. Bosch. No, it's Feathered it down the leg side and he's out caught. Up there, sitting in Kishile. Oh, well. oh, Jordan Arman can hit. Oh. Feed him the strike. You know, I, I'm, I'm also in favour of if you've got a batting liner, unless there are exceptional circumstances, stick, stick to that batting liner. There's nothing worse than being a batsman. And you're sitting there with your pads on and you're looking around you and three other people have got pads on and you don't know who's next. Yeah. There's nothing worse than, than unable to mentally prepare yourself. So the more settled a batting lineup becomes, becomes, the more successful it will be. So, Kashile in. He'll be facing Bosch. One for two in his first over Bosch. And it'll stay at one for two. Good fielding at that short third man position. So the hundred coming up for the Warriors. Eighty-six balls it took them. And oh, man, that's slow. Yeah. You would have thought they would have got a little bit more of a hurry on. 
chasing 169 for victory. Now all of a sudden that required rate's 11 runs to the over. Toshila uh, will get off the mark. Keeps the strike for the next over. Yeah. It's the end of a very good over from Bosch. His first over, one for three, 103 for three are the Warriors. I think there's a slightly nervous little dug out there. Yeah. And there's an indication, it's a bit nippy out there. Got their Towel, blankets on, yeah. Towels and blankets around them. 14 overs gone, it's almost time to put the foot down. Jordan Ammon, a lot is going to be placed on that young man's shoulders. 11 runs to the over required. Six overs remain. Game on. And the bowler that you're going to be facing is Lungi Ngidi. Pro to your speedster. Of course, trying to fight his way back into that national team. So. Uh, I think he's got some big contenders up against him. Gerald Kutsia and Andre Berger. Those are gentlemen that are a lot quicker and than, a lot younger than, than, <laughs> than Ngidi. So he's going to have his work cut out, but you can't beat performance. Mm. Keep performing, they've got to pick you. Ngidi to Tashile strikes him high on the pad. A little bit of movement there for Ngidi. Yeah, must have been an inside edge. edge up onto the thigh pad. So he gets the benefit of the run. Now, this is a situation now, virtually every dot ball, that run rate will climb. Mm. Pressure time now. What the Warriors will not want is it, for that required rate to reach 12 which would mean that they'd need two runs off of every ball and that puts a different kind of pressure onto a batting line. Well, oh, small ground, you can still get away with it. But even still, the pressure's on. Who's going to crack first? Oh, that, that is an absolute oh. gimme freebie. Help yourself, buffet. Four runs on a platter. And for Herman. Herman just coming across and helping it on its way with fine leg up in the circle. Just chirping it over his head. Fine leg is staying on the boundary now. No, that, that wasn't a good delivery. And it, it's now fine leg staying out on the boundary means that mid on has got to come back up into the circle. So you've got mid off, mid on, both up in the circle once again. Straight down the ground is the place to hit it. With a field like this, I don't think Lungin Gid is going to be pitching much up. No, oh, there's just a nudge off his hip again. He'll be looking for Ooh, two. He's, he's hurrying. And he'll make it quite comfortably. I thought Jordan Alman would be in trouble there if the pickup was good. It was a bit slow in coming, but turning for that second. I think he was so eager to get going, he had a bit of wheel spin. Yep. But Ngidi is chopping and changing his line far too much for my liking. You want back of a length, middle and off. There's almost a, a slow bouncer and Did get called me? wide. Yeah. Wow. And it's wasting deliveries now. I think and that's been a problem that's counted against Lugu and Gidi. Yep. That he's tried to bowl too many different deliveries in six balls. Yes. Trying too many variations, but I think that's, that's also something that has creeped into uh, bowlers who don't have that out and out pace anymore. No, oh. oh, that's smashed away. Back of the length, it sat up and said, please hit me. The only danger was the man inside the circle, extra cover, getting a hand to it. But it was hit so sweetly, extra cover never stood a chance. Jordan Adamant getting up on his tiptoes there and just trying to 
get over the ball, managed to do so and just smoked it through the offside. Now, what does Ngidi do now? Because he's, he's almost bowled a packet of licorice all sorts this yeah. over. He's, I'll, I'll, he, he's bowled four different deliveries, five in fact, including the wide. That was a short ball that flew over the batsman's helmet. So we've, we've seen five different deliveries in five different balls, and he's conceding runs. He's given up 26 already, and he's only bowled 10 balls. Top of off? Should be top of off. Back of the length, top of off. Batsman misses, you hit. Giddy again. Yeah. Change of pace and the inside edge. There's a better line from Ngidi. Yeah. The change of pace, almost the undoing of Herman. Didn't know, he, Herman didn't know too much about that, but that's the line that Lungi Ngidi needs. But again, uh, trying another variation, his fifth, sixth variation of this over. And you think of bowlers like Avon and Philander, they drop it on the same spot, the same penny. Of a spot on the on the on the, on the wicket every single delivery. I trust yeah, the ball to you, be so. But T20 has taught us you cannot be too predictable. Yeah. Ngidi again. Yeah, it's well played. Once again, just a little nudge on the leg side. Now, there to the shorter side of St George's Park, and the man that was a deep square leg yeah. was so quick off the boundary that it was impossible to get it to there. So, 15 overs gone, 117 for three. Still 10.4 the required rate. But fortunately, Herman seems to be going a lot better, finding more of the middle of his bat. He's on 32. Krasila's just come in, and all he's doing is rotating strike, and still Bosch to continue. At the same stage, Multiply Titans were also 117, but there were two wickets worse all. In the final five overs, the uh, Multiply Titans put on 50 runs. Oh, that's one way of doing it, away for four. You ain't stopping that one. That was a run down the pitch and heave ho, wide of mid on. But it almost looks like that's the Warriors game plan. 15 overs gone, you've got wickets in hand. Smack it. Yep. Time to put the foot down, acceleration starting. And just that one boundary mm. has brought the required rate below 10. And you know, it's almost as a yardstick, that 10 runs per over. It also brought the, the amount of runs to win, the number of runs to win below 50. So that's also the mental uh. Oh, it's down the leg side, off the pad, leg bars, good keeping by Pretorius, because the man at found leg for the Titans was quite square, shortish boundary, that would have run away for four, so three runs saved by Pretorius. 16 extras in this inning so far. Oh, that's naughty. Mm -hmm. And if, especially if you think about the one no ball that, were, that was for man, extra man being uh, outside the circle. Oh, that's basic team discipline. Naughty, and you just get the feeling that this is going to go down to the wire too. Ooh. Herman tries to go down the ground. All he's done is got underneath it. And a simple high catch. Difficult coming out of the black background, but well taken in the end. Uh, and he goes as far as mid-off. So Herman perishes, caught Brand off the bowling of Bosch. Bosch having a night yes, yep. to remember. He's picking up wickets at Wolf. 122 for four now. Oh, the Warriors. Patrick Kruger makes his way to the wicket. Had a bit of a rough night with the ball. Can you make it up with the bat? The darling, the new darling of St. George's Park. Warriors needing 10.4 and over, 122 for four now. But there's only two balls for Patrick Kruger, a six and a four. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Easy meet for him. But 
Yeah, cometh the hour. Come with the cometh man. Cometh the man. He's going to need to. 122 for four. 47 more runs required. 27 balls. Wide signaled once again, bowler and wicket keeper <laughs> up in unison, <laughs> trying to uh, fool the umpire. They can do better than that. And a wide given. 17 extras, that's important. Those extras. Yo. Important. Almost another batsman in the side for the Warriors. Unfortunately, Patrick Kruger doesn't have the luxury of having much time to get going. You know, well, that first one that went down the leg side for a wide was his sighter. He gets off the mark with the next. Oh, he's he's going to have to go hammer and tong, yeah. Sheila's just going to want to be feeding him the strike. You know, they've got to have identified roles. Yeah. You know, it's no, no use both of you trying to have a swing and both getting out. Because you're just exaggerating the problem. That's Rotate me. the strike and let one person be dedicated to having a swing. And that's been the, a hallmark of this warrior side this season, is that everybody knows their roles. That yeah. one just getting a bit big on Kashile. Yeah, I, I think he, he got a little bit surprised by the extra pace set. That was onto Kashile quite quickly mm. and he spliced it. But even still, it's a run, it's off the bat. It reduces that required number of runs to 44 of 25 balls. That's the key equation. Yeah, they'll take the run. It's a good over that from Bosch. Picks up his second wicket, concedes just 11 runs, 126 for four. But the important equation here, 43 to win of 24 balls, four overs. 43 runs it's going to require minimum of a boundary and over to Bosch uh, Bosch and Adam Pangiso very economical now the problem is Bosch has bowled well he's got two overs remaining there's Shamsi got two overs Khalim's got two overs remaining so options are there for the Titans it's how they use them in these remaining four overs. He is the man, Khalim, that will be taking over from the Dark Pond end. Currently going at two overs, not for 18. Yeah, it's all going to depend on what tactic he employs, what lines he's going to bowl, what lengths he's going to bowl. Third man coming up into the circle, fine legs already in the circle. And you've got an extra cover in the circle and a mid wicket in the circle. Men out, backward square leg, mid on, mid off, extra cover, backward point. That was a very good delivery. Saw Patrick Kruger coming across and just rolled his fingers around it, all building an off cutter. Just sitting up and taking pace off the ball, all he can do is hit it to the offside for that single. Well, the, the more pace you take off a ball, the more difficult it is as a batsman to try and time the ball and find the middle of the bat. So, clever delivery, but you'll find the exceptional batsman will actually wait and wait for that slower ball. Uh, there's a swing across the line, finally inside the circle, Takes an easy catch, and that's the end of Kashile. And whoa, the Warriors, they're in trouble now. Five down, 127 runs on the board. Just fading again in the back end of the inning. Things were looking a bit comfortable. Run rate is now pushing 12, 11 and a half. Sinatemba Kashile, eight off eight, with one boundary. Uh, you know, you hate to say this, but the Warriors have done so well, unbeaten. Mm -hmm. Surely at some stage, every side is going to have a bad game. Mm. It, it, it's, it's going to happen. And hopefully, tonight is not the night 
at their home ground. Keep well, on top. And hopefully just for a reputation yeah. of the one, the warriors here at St George's Park. You know, you don't want to concede. Don't want to lose at home. Fort, Fortress St. George's. Yeah, Khalim, good bowling. Squadron of the cap uh, of Tashile. Now, Swanapool, what can he do? Full ball, driven out on the leg side. Are they coming back for the Ooh. second? Yes, they will. It was wide enough of Madon. He had some ground to make, so it allows Swanapool to get off the mark. With a brace. Very, very good running. Kalim now again, top of his mark. Oh, that's too short. Leg side ish from Kalim. Allow Swanapool the single. Again, that seemed to bit put it off and it sat up again. If you have a look at the equation, you virtually have to look at it ball by ball. 39 to win, 20 balls remaining. So that required rate, for all intents and purposes, is two runs a ball. Now the pressure's on. The Warriors need one big over. Two. Oh, this will make such a difference. Yeah. One big over of a, a 17 or a 20 run over. Mm -hmm. Breaks the back of the chase. Oh, full, untimed. Are they coming back for second? No. no. Wise not to. It's very good fielding from the Titans. They're just attacking the balls from the boundary and stopping any thought of two runs being run. Especially on the shortest side of the foot. They've been a very good wide Yorker. Oh, the, putting it underneath it. The fielder that's on the boundary gets, gets to the ball a whole lot quicker. Oh, Swanepoel trying to make room for himself. Doesn't manage to. And that's a very good over, that from Khalim. Run. 31 for 5, 3 overs remain. The run rate has now jumped to 12.7. Now pressure really, really on, as we were, as you're saying, two runs of ball. Crowd still looking positive. Or that they're looking a bit nervy rather. Yeah, I think more nervous than anything else. Or the cold has got to them. <laughs> but it's uh, evenly poised at the moment. 18 balls left, 38 runs required. Bosch it's going to be. 2 for 11. Bowling his third over from the park drive end. Oh, and an inside edge. There is safety down there in the form of a fine leg. So it'll just be the single. Warriors need more than just the singles. They're going to have to throw that at ball now. Every single delivery run rate just inching up, inching up. It's now 13. Looking for that big over. Yeah. Situation just made that much harder with two new batters at the crease. Well, there the umpires are just making sure that there are four fielders inside the circle, and now all of a sudden Minoff drops back, and third man comes into the circle, and that's called wide. Quick delivery, but wide. Those extras climb. To Twenty to eighteen, sir. Pushing 20, but multiply Titans bowlers, bowlers just pushing it outside off stump, just testing the umpire's patience with that wide line. What can Bosch do? What can Swanepoel do? 
Oh, that is well bold. At the shoelaces, slightly wider wolf stump, but with pace. Swanna pull, not good enough to get back near it. And this is just tilting in favor of the Titans at the moment. 13 and a half runs per over required. 36 of 16. And that pendulum sways towards the Titans. Finally contact made. It'll only be the single. That's not enough for the Warriors. Titans won't mind. One run of ball, they win the game. Run red moves up to 14. Just again, full testing that wide line. Wide Yorker, very hard, difficult, very hard ball to get away for anything. Very hard to get underneath. Gosh, way too good tonight. Oh, follows him outside the leg stump. Does Bosch follow Kruger? And they'll get back for the second. Leg bars they are. Good bowling from Bosch. Got into that stage now. Even, even taking two, the run rate still goes up. Yeah. Yeah, extras finally at 20. Some big hits required. Third man up into the circle. All the men on the offside side in the circle. Oh, that's and that's straight. been nudged straight to the man on the cover point boundary by Kruger. And that sees Bosch with another wicket. His third. And the hopes of the Warriors Fading quickly, 136 for six now. Patrick Kruger out for five or seven, not having a good day at the office. Into JP King. His sixth match in a very young career, third innings. Well, there's another look at the wicket of Kruger. Short and he cuts it, struggles to actually reach it. But all he's done, this place it straight down backward points throat on the boundary. Being very disappointed in himself. Warriors really struggling. 136 for six. One ball to come in the 18. And King, the new batsman. Bosch. Looks for the full delivery. Now steal the single though. Singles, Titans won't mind. So 12 balls remain. 32 re runs required. That just means some big hitting. Otherwise, Titans have come to St. George's Park Fortress and they've beat the war beaten the Warriors at their own game. And we called it when they got to 165, 169, 170. We said that's something their bowling attack can defend it. Now Lazard Williams in. But I think the payback, uh, the, the Titans will be looking to uh, looking at this as payback since the Warriors came into Centro Fortress Centurion and beat them. Well, about two runs. Yeah, but <laughs> That's how tight it was. But I, I think if you look at turning points in this inning, should the Warriors go on to lose this game? I I'll look at when Bretsky got out. Hmm? That was a big turning point. Because at that stage, there was no pressure on the Warriors. They were comfortable. They had men in. As you were saying, we felt like Matthew Bretsky just gave it away. Oh. Lord Williams, oh. troubling batters all night. And he's going to King. So the lower order of the Warriors being exposed here. Yeah? Williams now. Oh. oh, he's played right through the line. There is a man out there. And, and catch taken. Another wicket falls. 
The Warriors in some serious trouble. Williams picks up his second wicket, 137 for seven now. And the Warriors in all sorts of trouble. Warriors just disintegrating. It, just in the last five overs of the uh, Multiply Titans, they've managed to get 50 runs. Right? And I think that could also have been a, 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 a point at where we were saying that the highest chase ever at Dapper at, George, at St. George's Park was 173. So 160, 169 to get as we look again. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got to play these sort of shots, but you know, unfortunately you see the bat turn in his hand. Even though it came right out the middle and it was high, good catch out in the deep. But you think too little, too late now. If we look at Nielen van Heerden coming in now. Yeah. Fourth innings. He's got four runs and his highest score is four not out. That yeah. was last year. And, he, and he's facing bowlers with international T20 experience. And we brought that up earlier. They, for, they've got the multiply Titans have five bowlers in their bowling lineup that have played inter, at international level. And Bosch has also played for the, eight, the SA18. So he's had that experience at a, a, a step up from uh, provincial cricket. Well, it certainly has told. Daffabit Warriors top order getting starts. Just not being able to click on. Oh, that's all Van Heerden can do. Is just paddle it around the corner. That is required right now. It is nasty. 18.6 runs to the over. Well, 31 runs off 10 balls. Right about now, fans would start waxing uh, whimsically about. I remember when Herschel Gibbs hit 6 6 in, a, in an over. Uh, I don't think that these batters right now have that ability in them, unfortunately. And that was against the Netherlands, and this is international class bowlers. But that'll go for six. Surely it must go for six. Oh, maybe with a gallant effort from deep mid wicket, it's gone for four. Every boundary helps, but what an effort out on the boundary. Brilliant effort. A lot of acreage had to be made up out on that deep mid wicket boundary. Went around, uh, came around a long, long way, putting in the dive just, and that just shows you how committed the, the, the Titans are. Well, I'll take the boundary though. Oh, that is smashed for four. Whoa, that it's is not wow. over till the fat <laughs> lady has sunk. Two brilliant boundaries, 23 now of eight. Fine struck that from Swanapool. Gave himself some room and smoked it to the offside. Oh. In advancing down the pitch, turned it into a perfect half volley. Had given himself the room. There was no way anybody was going to stop that. When you consider that the men out on the boundary, three on the leg side, That won't be a boundary. It'll just be, oh, they're coming back for the second. They'll have to hurry. Good running there. But even still, two runs a ball. Not going to do it. 148 for seven. 21 to win for seven balls. Oh, getting tight. Bayer Swanepoel believes. Williams, two for 25, last ball of his fourth over. And that's been smacked high. It should be another wicket. No, it's dropped. It's dropped. 
a let off, but it still doesn't change the equation much for the Warriors. 20 they need off the last over. Never easy backpedaling and trying to take it no. over your shoulder. Not out of the lights like that. That was very difficult. See? Was that in Gidi? Got himself. Yeah, it was. Got himself in a mighty tangle. Just putting it down. Those catches are never easy. And as you said, in the lights, it makes it even harder. Oh, it's that white ball coming out of a, a black background where you've got no depth perception. Yep. So you, you don't know how quickly that white ball's coming down at you. And you see a lot of high catches like that spilt, even by the best it's of different. fielders. It's not easy taking a catch against the black sky of night. Auburn Bosch bowling to bowl the final over 20 runs to defend. Has had a great night so far. 3 for 15. Auburn Bosch coming in now. Two base, one a pool. Full toss outside of testing the umpire's patience again with that wide line, but this time inside of it. Not a bad line, but that was a on pace delivery. Yeah. That the pace was just way too quick for Swanapool there. So even though it would would have been a full toss, it, it was just past Swanapool before the bat and hands could get into the line. Good ball, well bowled. Swanapool. Crowd behind him. Got one. Oh. They didn't get all of that. Well, the crowd are <laughs> paying for a six every delivery. It looked like it was going for six and then it just shows you how difficult it is to time those full tosses. That brings up the Daffa Bed Warriors 150. Coming off 124 balls, they're behind the eight ball now. Oh, now the Warriors need six a ball. Oh, oh they've got to turn this into two, whether they like it or not. They've got to turn it into two, whether they like it or not. And they have. So that's every ball must go for six. Need a 16 or three. Pressure is 100% only on the batters. Now the da damage was done earlier on. Yeah. You, you know you can't expect your numbers nine and ten. Slashes this one away. Fall safely, but oh. that's game. Oh, just the two runs. So barring a no ball, wide or anything like that, the worst is a no ball. Wide at least you can only give one away. Right, yep. No ball is a free hit and the extra ball. So barring any strange mishap for the Titans, they should win this. Even the band sounds sad now. I think it's the last post. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dot ball. And that confirms it. 14 runs required. One ball left. And unfortunately, at their home ground, Darfur Vet St. George's Park, the Warriors face their first loss of the season. But they've had a good record. It's their ninth game. It, it was bound to happen. Not if, when but, it was going to yeah. happen. And it's better for it to happen now than it happened in the second final. And that's the last ball of the game. And it smashed down the ground, but they only take the single. They trot through. And that is the end of the game. Multiply Titans coming up victorious by 14 12 runs. Run, 12, 12 runs. runs. Yeah, it was a good effort by the Warriors, but you've just got to say that uh, the, line, the, the Titans bowlers mm -hmm. were helped by a couple of batsmen giving their wicket away and you've got to, that partnership 
between uh, Magopani and uh, the other Tyson Bassman, that, that was the foundation that won them that game. That was also happened in the latter half of their innings. And yeah. uh, all credit to them. They deserve to win. Matanya, Matanya and Adam Pangiso coming in yeah. at the back end and just that taking was the it away. And, and that, that, is the dif that was the difference between uh, the teams today. Uh, but a great effort by the Multiply Titans getting one back over on the Daffabet Warriors. No, you, you look at that Warriors batting lineup. You know, you've got Brietzky, Magokane, Herman, all getting in mm -hmm. almost into the 30s. Then yep. Swanapool, 20. So there were batsmen that had stocks. Yeah. That, that you needed the one batsman to go through and be maybe 55, 60 not out. And then the Warriors win the game easy. And I thought that that person tonight should have been the captain, Matthew Brietzky. Yeah. He should have been there and said, right, I'm going to bat 20 overs. I'll get my 60 not out, we win the game. Just a bit of, uh, oh, uh, as you said, he just lapsed, uh, just a lapse of concentration, just giving it away yeah. there for Matty Mad Bietzke. You have the indication of the good spirit in which these T20 games are played, the friendships between all the players and officials involved, fun to see, and I'm sure there will be lots of yarns and we got one back over you at your home ground. Lots of uh, chirping. Yeah. These chaps play each other so often nowadays. But uh, all deserved winning points to the Titans. They win by 12 runs, fully deserved. And uh, at least the Warriors still stay top of the table. And they've still got a 10 point clear gap. So maybe. St. George's Park stays the Warriors' fortress because in all likelihood they're going to have semi-finals and possibly a final. There's your final summary of the game. Titans were 168 for 9 and there Makanyana, he was very good for his 60. Moon Sammy got that 34. Pangisa, captain's knock of 28. And the Bay of Swanapool, a fine five wicket haul. And it, 168 for 9, Dufferbed Warriors in reply, 156 for 7, Magopane 33, Herman 32, Bresky 25, and then at the end Swanapool 22 not out, but on the night just not enough and deservedly so, the Momentum Multiply Titans win the match by 12 runs. Thank you very much to all the production staff, the players, everybody involved here at St. George's Park, and we wish you a good night.